Uh, welcome to the 2020 Startup Lab BD Lab Demo Day organized by Contamination Lab Trento. I am Alessandro Rossi. I am the instructor of Startup Lab and I'm quite happy tonight because I'm joined by uh, Vittorino Filippas, which is the instructor of BD Lab and CILAP Trento Manager. Hello, Vittorino. Hello, everybody. I'm super happy to see students performing like uh, startups. Go, go, go. And, and now then let's I'm leave. Joined, and I'm joined uh, by Gloria Cannone, which, which is uh, the Contamination Lab uh, facilitator. Hello, Gloria. Hello, hello, everybody. And then from Jacopo Zotti, which is the mastermind of our communication team. Hello, Jacopo. Hello, everybody. Okay, so first of all, uh, welcome to Contamination Lab. You can, you can see it uh, in my back. I'm actually been stuck here, held hostage here since uh, the lockdown be began. So what is Contamination Lab Trento? It's a physical and virtual learning space of the University of Trento, which is managed in partnership with Ab Innovazione Trentino. And it's a lab which aims at fostering academic education on soft skill, creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and intrapreneurship. So Contamination Lab Trento is a new founded program, which is meant to complement the standard academic curricula, so to say, by employing uh, uh, rather innovative teaching methods uh, based on laboratory learning, problem-based uh, learning, teamwork, uh, both in entrepreneurship and in venture creation. So what we do here, is that we try to expose students to a stimulating environment, which is designed to encourage uh, entrepreneurial approaches uh, and which are inspired by the principle of proactive problem solving, sustainability, innovation, and learning. So this is it. So this evening we are broadcasting live the final event of the main educational format of Contamination Lab, which is Startup Lab. And Startup Lab is run in cooperation with the EAT Digital Master School under the course of business development lab. So uh, this um, joint venture between Startup Lab and BD Lab has proven successfully in the past year. So we renewed for this year. So we will have a huge amount of participants. And um, so this is the demo. And we'll be here stuck for around four hours. So don't go anywhere else. So bring the snacks, relax, kick off your shoes and be ready to enjoy the night. But also, please be ready to interact because you'll be asked to vote and you will be asked a question during the event. Okay, so that's it. Welcome. So in the beginning, I'd like uh, uh, in particular to welcome uh, the rector of the University of Trento, Professor Paolo Collini, uh, which has uh, some words uh, to share with us. So. Well, my, my welcome to all of you. It's a pleasure to be, well, somewhere, but uh, with you uh, in this very unusual way of uh, participating to C-Lab uh, event. Uh, but also quite happy that uh, C-Lab was uh, capable of doing uh, this event, the demo, demo day. It is quite a key event of, of the year, of the semester at least, uh, in which people are asked to, to show what they've been able to put together in the way they were taking innovation into the ideas they have in their mind. Uh, well, innovation is, uh, uh, is something, of course, we, we work for. Uh, I would say it's quite difficult to say the way a university tries to be innovative, but uh, uh, the way we try to be innovative is to try to help people to, to become innovative. Uh, and uh, the C-Lab is definitely one of the, well, I would say it is, it is the, the uh, uh, activity that we have in the university to, to help students uh, to uh, um, understand what innovation is and the way innovation can affect their life. Uh, innovation is a very broad concept. Innovation means to do something new or something different, but uh, clearly it's more, much more than that. Innovation means to take uh, new ideas into a context and try to uh, put them to work. Uh, that's a very difficult thing to do. And, uh, and having the chance during the curriculum as a student at the university to uh, participate, to, to, to 
And learning okay opportunity like this one means that you have the chance to to understand and to uh, take innovation as a part of your of your mindset. Is that the key word? I think that the, the key word, the key thing in innovation is to be uh, in, uh, to take the innovation into your mindset. Anything you do, try to look at the way that uh, you could change it in a better way. And uh, of course, if you do business, as you yeah, you're here to understand how to do business. Uh, business is a very complex process, but people that don't get up every day and ask themselves uh, how they could improve the way they are doing things, how they could take knowledge from different things and to put into the, the daylight, well, that's I think they miss an opportunity, and you are probably one of the best people that can do it now because we had the chance to go through this very challenging and demanding process of being part of the lab uh, with two very very good instructors that I know quite for, I've, I've known quite a long time, and I know they are quite uh, demanding, tough, but very good in helping you to to do things and to to improve and to learn and to go up. That's important thing. Every day we go up. At one point, you, you might not go up, you just get old, but that's uh, the same concept. You take a step forward and you enjoy what you do. That's important because if you enjoy what you're doing, it means that you're doing something you like. And remember, when you do something you like, you do it in the best way you could do it. And nobody else could do it in a better way. So be proud of your job. It's a kind of competition where at the end, anybody wins because just being here means to win. Uh, but of course, there is probably some way of getting the award, but uh, good luck, enjoy, and uh, have fun. Thank you very much, Paolo. It has been quite a great, uh, a great introduction. You have always been quite a guide for us, uh, sustaining Startup Lab since the early days. So thank you for being here with us. And, uh, Please, I would like uh, uh, you to think over to the world, uh, put innovation into the standard mindset of students. So your future will be a successful future if you will wake up every morning thinking how I can make my life and someone else's life better than yesterday. So this is the spirit of innovation. This is something that we try to put in the startup lab and BD lab. And we try to give you very small pills of tutorial and uh, some great support from mentors. And then uh, we rely on your heavy teamwork to transform your newly born ideas into potential business. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for putting the energy. But now let's start from uh, the facts and figures of, uh, of this year. Grazie, Paolo. Thank you very much. So Thank let's say the fact and figures of uh, this year are quite astonishing. We are growing year by year. So this year we decided to, to accept 130 students from more than 200 applicants, mainly master students and some PhDs coming from 24 nationalities. So leverage diversity, non, not just fill the gaps, between different cultures, but leverage the diversity. This is our motto. You have been helped, supported, and guided by 13 mentors that are successful startups. We had uh, 10 guest experts, investors, uh, founders of startups, founders of uh, incubators. We had uh, six junior mentors also helping you, and they were alumni. They were sit in your chair just a few years ago. And let's say it was uh, looking quite ages ago when, uh, when we started. And unfortunately, we <clears throat> had the chance to see you for the first and for the last time only once. Please the slide. And uh, let's say, unfortunately, after the kickoff meeting, <clears throat> we have been hit by coronavirus like a storm. And so we have been forced to go full online. And uh, we were not planning to go online. You were supposed to do this. Contamination lab, C lab is there to be contaminated. 
to know each other, to mix each other, to stay in touch with each other. But unfortunately, we have a new constraint in the market. And so instead of being like this, it happened that you start knowing each other like that. So it was a little bit different. Wow, was quite <clears throat> different from what has been playing. But we have to be proactive. We have to find new ways. You were supposed to get tutorials this way, so very interactive tutorial like this. But unfortunately, your tutorial became something like that. And uh, we were in the box uh, like uh, squirrels moving and uh, fronting to giving you the message, hoping being able to, to convey a message to you. But this was not what was planned. But we have to do our best with the new constraints. So uh, finally, you should have been like this as a team. So very well gelled, hugging each other and smiling and showing like this. Actually, it happened something different, but the smile were there and you ended up to something like this. That is, okay, not bad for being just in a virtual form. So you start acting as a team. So it's not anymore me and you, is is us. You start generating your idea, you start improving idea, and then, and then panic. You start validation of the idea. So hard working, validation was dramatic. So uh, pivoting, oh, shit, we have to pivot. That's really bad. Then you discover that pivot is not a tragedy. Pivot means improving. And uh, instead of working like this, uh, you worked uh, like that. So we were not like in the elementary school, very near to you to see if you were working or not. But in your future, nobody will be so near to you to push you. It's the market, it's the customer that will push you to work more, to work better. So some teams did very well, some team just did well, some team did in an excellent way. In fact, we have seen a very nice and steady and steady growth. Very good. So at a certain point of time, mentors arrived. Ah, so maybe mentors released a bit of a pressure. Okay, but this was actually just the first five minutes. Then you discovered that mentors were challenging you. And mentors, was it was not in person, it was virtual, but mentors were pushing you more because the target of mentor is not to take your part, is not to take your hot chair, but is to help you in taking the decision and pushing you to use the best of your efforts to get the best decision. Of course, you see some smiling faces, some more doubtful faces, but this is, uh, this is life. This is when you have a consultant. This is when someone else is challenging your project. Not challenge for the sake of challenging, challenging for the sake of reinforcing your project. And finally, <clears throat> let's say, uh, what was the sense of uh, of this specifically this BD lab and, and startup lab? So we have been hit by by a storm. Uh, COVID was absolutely not uh, planned. Yes, yes, it's not my fault. Now it's clear. Uh, you never know how uh, you can you not manage things like this. Nobody managed the the dot com crisis. Nobody managed the the, the uh, subprime uh, uh, problem. So life hits you and uh, you have uh, hardly any chance to change what uh, the world is doing to you. But you have big, big chances to change your approach towards life. And uh, you have to manage your boats to be able to challenge the storm. So nothing to do with the storm, but let's say riding your boat and sailing your boat the best way out of the storm. This is what uh, I did in my company. We were successful uh, before COVID uh, with the uh, uh, expectation to grow 50% also this year. Probably there will be no growth and we have far more depth than what we, we were planning, but there was no single moment where we were thinking to give up. And this is what you did. And this is what you did. So you never stop. And actually, what we, you, we have seen at the beginning is you like this. And uh, 
Gloria, go on the slide, please. So this is how you started before being hit by coronavirus, before changing the BD lab from, uh, from in-person to virtual. But we are very proud that you did a great job and uh, you put yourself under testing. And now you are after the, you survive the semifinals and you are ready for the demo day and you are like this. So I think you are now ready to challenge the jury with your projects. Thank you very much for following us. For us, it has been a pleasure and a privilege to have you as uh, our company side by side to us, virtually side by side. And uh, now I leave uh, to Gloria to give you the agenda, introduce uh, to you the jury before the key point of today that will be the pitches. Let's say, thanks guy, it has been a privilege. Gloria, now yes. it's your turn. Thank you, Vetterino. Thank you so much. So I'm here just to introduce you a bit more about the agenda of today. So in a few minutes, we'll start with the presentation from all our finalists. And then we'll have the possibility to vote your uh, favorite project thanks to the People Choice Award. And then after uh, 19, there will be our keynote speaker uh, here in this uh, channel on YouTube. And after the keynote speaker, there will be our, our ceremony. So we'll announce the, all the winners from this 2020 Startup Lab edition. But let me uh, say a few more words about how People Choice Award Word that we work. So from 18, you can go on our Facebook page, click on video and look at all the 23 projects that our students developed in these three months. And then from uh, 18, you can vote your favorite. Uh, put a like, but be, pay attention because you'll have just one hour to vote your favorite project. And at, at the end of this hour, we will count how many likes each project has been reached and then declare the uh, People Choice Award winner. After that, and 19, here in this channel, we will have Yari Onibeni as a keynote speaker and investor of hardware startups. Then it's not finished for you, it's not finished for us, because uh, I'd like to introduce you also to our jury. And this year we'll have Sara Roversi, founder, ecosystem director, and chief of social uh, mission of T Future Food Institute. Then we have Roberto Napoli, responsible for all our open innovation challenges at Contamination Lab and also uh, is involved in an international office at University of Trento. Then we have Luciano De Propris, head of open innovation and sustainability of Elias Consortium. But it's not the end because we also have Susanna Zuccarini, senior business developer and analyst of, uh, from Invitalia. Then Andrea Bolner, business angel and startup advisor. And last but not least, Christian Giacom at the incubation area Area and start up at Trentino Sviluppo. What a jury. So with great pleasure, it's now the time to uh, show you also your project. And so, um, ready to go? Ready to go. Yes, uh, we are ready to see the first project. And uh, okay, let's uh, focus on this question. What makes a great performer, an excellent performer. Of course, is uh, capability, determination, but also a great mentor. So we have 13 mentors in Startup Lab, BD Lab, coaching you to perfection. Some of them was milder, some of them was really rough, like Alessandro Ligabo, as you probably experienced. But let's say, Rough mentors are not a peculiarity of, uh, of Startup Lab. In fact, if you are a musician, if you are a drummer, you can have as a mentor Fletcher. And this is the pleasure to introduce Team Fletcher. 
Welcome to everybody. I am Laura from Fletcher and my aim today is to tell you why after hundreds of years of honorable service, the traditional metronome is no more enough. In particular, if your work is giving the rhythm to the others or in other words, you're a drummer, you must keep a steady tempo. And in this scene from the movie Whiplash, the teacher Fletcher showed just how hard it can be. Well, we actually found out that 70% of the drummers feel exactly that pain. And why should they keep on struggling? when a smart metronome is ready for the 21st century drummers. This little shiny hardware is able to feel your rhythm and give you real-time feedbacks on your performance. You can connect it to any drum sets thanks to specific sensors, and with a very easy system of lights, it will tell you whether you are late or early on each drum kicks. Even more, through a dedicated app, drummers will be able to get insight on their performance to track their progresses, to share them online, and also to get personalized exercises. 60% of the drummers we interviewed showed the real interest in trying our device, and uh, with an estimation of 13,000 drummers only in Italy and a growing trend of new students approaching this instrument, we are confident of our market, and we are going to keep away the competition because for the affordable price of only 50 euros, we offer the highest possible level of precision and smart interaction. And that's how we're going to differentiate, for example, from existing apps that are not in real time or traditional metronomes that are not quite interactive. But now let me tell you how we're going to make our project a concrete reality. First of all, as any other rock band, we're going to start from our garage, producing our first bunch of prototypes thanks to our 3D printer and our internal capabilities. Then we're going to start a Kickstarter campaign in order to get ourselves out from the garage and to create a market for a product before it's even out and also to collect valuable feedbacks and support from the early users. Next, uh, with the tuned version, we are going to launch in the EU. And in this period, we are making our top priority to be known within drummer communities and supported by well-known drummers. Finally, our Madison Square Garden concert will be the worldwide launch. We are distributing using our website and the most used web retailers. Now, we know we have great capabilities, but they will probably not be sufficient in order to get to our aim. And that's why I'm here to ask you for your financial support of 40,000 euros in order to cover the cost of high volume production, the marketing campaign, and also to build a solid base for future ideas. Now, I'm very proud to present you the team. We have the technical side of the moon with Alessandro, our CTO, drummer and YouTuber, and Arturo, our ad developer. They together build the first prototype. Then we have the complementary business side of the moon with Lucrezia, our incredible marketing director, and me, the CEO, coordinating and managing us all towards what unifies us, that is, making learning and practicing till perfection fast and easy thanks to Fletcher and together with your help. Because remember, a fast drummer is not a good drummer, but a precise one for sure is. So make sure you check out our websites and our socials and thank you very, very much for the attention. Okay, and that was uh, Fletcher, uh, a team coached by uh, uh, the mentor Lorenzo Modena, which is Lorenzo, which is the CEO of OpenMove. Is a very experienced serial entrepreneur. So let me also share some secrets on the background. So we have 13 excellent mentors and they compete themselves in order to bring their teams to the final of the demo day. So I'm um, sure that Lorenzo now is enthusiastic of uh, his Fletcher team being in the final. And now it's time to move on to the next team. Uh, and it's, it's the time of um, where to wine. Uh, so during the pandemic lockdown, you probably have fantasized a lot about escaping and going elsewhere. And now that you can, you can plan your next wine tour with the Where to Wine. So let's see the video and see the teammates. Good evening, I'm Laura De Bortoli and today I will present you Where to Wine. Here we have Giovanni, a man devoted to his beloved vineyards. People love him when they visit his winery. His passion pours out from his eyes. Unfortunately, he's not able to transmit it through its basic website. So just his lifelong customers understand the incredible experience he offers. Here we have friends enjoying a tasting in the vineyards. 
However, to choose the right winery, they visited too many websites, finding it very annoying. We have the perfect solution. Our platform increases winery's visibility and wine lovers can find out unique experiences with just one click. We validated our solution with 13 wineries and 150 final users, and we received a positive feedback. We developed our platform starting from Casonato Vini, a winery interested in our solution. In our website, we give voice to wineries which can easily customize their contents and share their values. Indeed, with our video making skills, we offer an extra service, a professional set of videos and pictures helping wineries to communicate their values. Final users instead can make the best choice and easily book online tastings. Why? Because they have a complete overview of the winery in advance by knowing its story, its product, and other people's reviews of past, past experiences. We start with Trentino and Veneto regions that total account for 3,500 wineries. Our potential customers are small, com uh, small wineries at their first step of digitalization offering wine tastings, accounting for 2,000. In Italy, wine tourism generates 2.5 billion revenues and our two regions reach 900 million euros. A flourishing market if we look at the 14 billion revenues generated by Europe, a market that we plan to reach in 2022 after the Italian one. Our competitors are magazines, an informative tool with low visibility, social networks with no booking service, and efficient only if the user knows in advance the wineries and search for it. The booking platforms like Cantine.wine focused on um, the booking service mainly for digitally advanced wineries. Where to Wine collects their main strength in a, in a unique solution. More importantly, we combine various communications of small wineries with the opportunities of the digital world. Our revenues will come from wineries purchasing different packages for further services. We plan to launch our platform in July and to have the first 35 wineries by September 2020. In August 2021, we're supposed to reach the ROI. To reach clients and users, uh, we planned uh, for wine wineries door-to-door uh, -door visits. And for wine enthusiasts, uh, we have identified specific groups in the social networks. Plus, the Veneto region hosts thousands of uh, tourists along the coast that, thanks to our platforms and communication strategies, uh, could come to the inland to visit wineries. Why us? We have a business and computer science background with video-making skills. Moreover, my family is an historical grape producer. This helps us for networks in the wine market. We ask for 50,000 euros, mainly for development costs, followed by management and advertising costs. It's time for you to bet on us because wineries produce wine, but we bring them front line. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good pitch from Laura, but of course, uh, the 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 team, the World Wine team, were not uh, alone. They have been coached by Nadia Bobova. And Nadia is a co-founder and CEO of uh, Kiss My Bike Labs. So she is uh, a young entrepreneur, young and successful entrepreneur, and uh, you know, she did uh, quite an effort to take uh, the World Wine up to speed. Good, but now let's move to a different subject. A subject that is also uh, takes me uh, personally, frankly speaking. I have uh, three kids, three boys. Uh, two of them are dyslexic. And from one side, I see them with real difficulties in reading. From the other side, I see them, uh, their ability to perceive uh, shapes and uh, forms and uh, colors. Okay. Dyslexia is where these themes started from, and then they moved from dyslexia with to dyscalculia. And now I leave the floor to the team Caltex that have an excellent solution to show to you. Caltex is an electronic physical calculator with big screen to share operations where numbers are represented by figures and it is also able to speak loud. 
you're probably wondering why we're presenting such a particular calculator. Well, we came up with this product together with a team of specialists to be able to assist the children in primary school with difficulties in math and especially children with dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is a learning disability which translates into difficulty in understanding numbers, manipulating numbers, and performing even basic arithmetical operations. Based on ISTA data of 2019, 2,500,000 of Italian children were not able to reach sufficient math knowledge. But what you don't see is that behind these children, there are more than 2 million families struggling because they're not able to find any good solution to support their children in math learning. Even though dyscalculic children are very different from one another and need personalization in the learning experience, they all share something, a great visual sense and the benefit from other stimuli. Based on this insight, our calculator will provide number visualization to help children identify and distinguish numbers and other stimuli to enhance and support their understanding. Our calculator is a simple tool that school children could carry everywhere, even at school, and on which they could practice math independently, eliminating in this way the need to depend on parents and tutors, and of course relieving a huge amount of stress from their parents' shoulders. Currently, other solutions available for dyscalculic children are not able to combine the independent learning with the physicality of the tool. Having a physical tool is a very crucial aspect because, as emphasized by many professionals, it gives to the children a sense of concreteness. And by pushing buttons and touching, it provides new responses to stimulate and facilitate the learning. Going back to our competitors, Resources that are certified by the Italian Ministry of Education, by law, have to be used in presence of a professional for therapeutic purposes, so not by kids alone. Apps and computer games used to practice math cannot be used during school hours, and they do not have the physicality aspect. Other tools, such as the line of numbers, provide physicality, but at very limited capacity in terms of operations they can perform. Our product will be able to combine both aspects, and in this way, it will complement therapy. Our mission is to support families that are facing this challenge by giving them a tool that kids could use independently to do their homework, a tool they can even bring in school. Calvex is a product that will make dyscalculic children able to enjoy and experience school as any other kid of their age. Parents were so supportive of our idea that currently 82% of those we interview are testing our minimum viable product. Furthermore, Professor Masachi from the University of Trento reached out because the university is willing to sponsor our patent filing. What we're asking you is an initial investment of 34,000 euros for the initial production coverage of the first batch and being able to distribute CACDES for the beginning of the school year for 30 euros. So this is our team, and now we need an investor to make math fun again for everybody, both children and parents. So choose Cogdex. You can count on it. So thanks, uh, Cogdex. A great team, which had a mentor coming every week from Zurich. Clelia Calabro, a passionate entrepreneur and alumna of the Contamination Lab Trento. So thanks to Zoom, it was commuting back and forth every week to meet with our students. So moving along, let's introduce the next project and the next team. So population aging is becoming a phenomenon very widespread that we have, we have to live uh, with. So and many business and startups are growing manifold in trying to serve this direction and find this kind of fertile ground for their innovation uh, solution. A new star is entering the galaxy now, and it's the project Bitme, a project coached by Lorenzo Sanna, business developer from ET Digital. So without further ado, let's see their video. Hello, I'm Julia, and today I'm here to present you Bitme. We will all grow old, and we would all like to be this happy when we do, even if we end up in a nursing home. 
Unfortunately, this is not a reality for many. 40% of guests feel lonely, and we work overload as a daily reality for most of the staff. Taking proper care of guests becomes very difficult. Also, administrators have their own problems. Efficiently managing all the work and activities that are going on inside the structures, while at the same time maintaining a peaceful relationship with relatives, are no simple tasks. And this has gotten much worse since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. And this is why we wanted to create a simple and complete solution. And this is how we created BINNIT, a communication system that makes your nursing home an efficient and comfortable place by giving a voice to everyone. Guests will have a one-purpose device with a very simple interface that will allow them to make specific requests like asking for water and emergency ones. Furthermore, with one simple click, they will be able to video call their loved ones and keep in touch with them. The staff is going to have a very simple dashboard that will give them a clear overview of all the calls that have been made and the ones that have been taken in charge. They will additionally be able to call for help if, need, if they need it. Last but not least, administrators will have a pool of data analytics always available that will give them a clear overview of everything that's going on inside the structure. This will help them on one side optimizing all the work and activities and on the other one guaranteeing to relatives that they are offering the best possible service. The market is huge. There are more than 6,000 nursing homes in Italy. Around 2,000 of them are private structures dedicated to non-self-sufficient elderly. And of these, we would like to target the ones that are in the north central part of the country. As a revenue model, we will offer an installation fee plus a monthly fee that will cover system maintenance and customer care. We have competitors, of course, but we offer a unique pool of operative efficiency, customizability and data collection. In addition to this, we are the only system that is elderly centers, has a built-in video call feature and offers data analytics. We will start development in June and we will need a 34K initial investment. This will cover logistics and hardware expensive for the testing phase that will start in September together with pre-sales. And will also allow, allow us to arrive on market in December. In June 2021, the company will become profitable. And in November 2022, we will ma make an estimated 100K monthly revenue. We will reach our customers through direct sales and in dedicated events. We will also have marketing campaigns and specialized sites and magazines. We already have a partnership with the Hauser Association that will help us go through the first phases of our development and two nursing homes that are willing to test our solution. This is us, a skillful and hardworking team, but we need your help to make BINNIT a reality. Thank you for your time. And thank you to Julia from BITNIT for her clear explanation. And now before changing completely subject, I have to update you on a great news. So one of our mentors uh, that before being uh, startup up mentors, uh, startup lab mentors, they are successful startup. Uh, and uh, Daniele Basso is his name. He get a successful round of investment right in these days. And he was of course uh, covered uh, in the local news. What is not yet in the local news is that Daniele was also the mentor of Goldberry. And so now we leave the microphone to Giada of the Goldberry team to introduce this innovative project. Go Giada with Goldberry. Good evening everyone and thank you for being here. I'm Giada from Goldberry. Let me introduce you Gabriele. Gabriele was born in Trentino region in the 90s, when his father started cultivating blueberries. Since then, they harvest and do quality check by hand. 
But Gabriele is now grown up and he is aware that manual quality check takes out of time and reduces the amount of wax, which is that white powder that protects the fruit. We interviewed a lot of Italian farmers and most of them do quality check by hand, wasting a lot of time and resources on that. Also consortia feel the same problem. Our solution is a machine able to perform quality check for blueberries through machine learning. It will save time, money and preserve the wax. We are developing a user-friendly tool for farmers, which will ensure higher quality from the very beginning of the value chain until the final customer. Gabriele is an associate of Sant'Orsola Consortia, and he told us that farmers would be interested in buying our machine because it costs them on average 10,000 euro per hectare to do manual quality check. How does it work? The machine is made up of two modules. The first is a portable basket that the farmer brings with him in the field when harvesting, and it filters the blueberries from bush and leaves. Then the basket is positioned above the main module, which retrieves the berries, and as they slide down, they are analyzed through microcontrollers and cameras. Machine learning works with an algorithm that learns and improves by taking pictures of berry. Cameras will take pictures of berries and the software will tell which are good and which are bad. As you can see, the average Italian field for blueberries goes from half an hectare to two hectares, which is much less compared to global competitors' cultivation. Therefore, we found this market niche made of small farmers very profitable, not only for blueberries, but also for all the other small fruits. We are the best solution for small Italian farmers because our machine has high portability, meaning that it is little and way cheaper than big industrial equipment. Moreover, it has a non-invasive process allowing for high wax preservation. For what concerns our revenue model, we will patent our machine and license out the production of the hardware, whereas we will develop the software in-house because we have the competencies in our team. Indeed, we have a machine learning expert. So we will get 30% of royalties for every machine sold. Plus, with the data gained from the first year sales, we will upgrade our software and ask for 100 euro subscription fee. We plan to realize a 3D printed model by the end of June. Then we will patent, prototype and test it. For this first round, we need 50,000 euro, planning the return on investment in one year. Then, once we get in the market, we plan to scale up the business to other small berries. Our team is strong and with all the competencies needed. We have Gabriele on board, which will be our first beta test. Then we have Leonardo, which is a machine learning expert, and we also have pharmaceuticals and business backgrounds. Just to recap, we are asking you for 50,000 euro in order to develop our first prototype, sustain patenting cost, and use it for demonstration in order to sell and acquire new customers. We believe in smart farming. Thank you all and get in touch with us for further information. Okay, great. And that was Goldberry. And now for something completely different, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about sex. Okay. Let me come closer. Uh, so when exactly did you have the talk? Uh, if you had any when you were uh, uh, young. Uh, but is it even appropriate in innovation contests to talk about sex? Uh, well, yes, it is. It is when you have a great team which is ready to rethink the approach to sex education. And so if you're curious enough, so don't miss a word uh, that the team Sex Plain It has to say now. So Sex Explain It is a project which is coached by Sveta Maitanovic. And uh, so now let's see the video. She's Chiara. She's 15 and last night she wanted to have sex with her boyfriend for the first time. But they forgot condoms. Chiara felt a lot of pressure and didn't know what to do. She never received advice on how to behave in such situations and didn't know where to search for it. 
Chiara, like most of Italian teenagers aged between 14 and 18, just got some very basic sexual education at school, which doesn't include topics like affectivity and relational aspects. That's because in Italy, compared to other EU countries, there's no law regulating the teaching of sex ed. This lack of preparation leads teenagers to adopt risky sexual behaviors and disrespectful attitudes. Talking with more than 40 teenagers, we understood that Chiara is not the only one having experienced this problem. Teenagers we've talked to told us that they don't feel prepared to face the everyday life doubts related to sexuality. For example, they told us they wouldn't know what to do if the girl gets pregnant or what to do if the condom breaks. Also, teenagers fear being judged by their friends and they find embarrassing talking about sexuality with their parents. Finally, when they find information online, they don't trust it. So, we came up with an idea that guarantees both anonymity and reliability in order to satisfy their needs. Sexplain It Up empowers Italian teenagers to share their experiences and doubts regarding relationships and sexuality in an engaging and innovative way. Sexplain It allows teenagers to read and share anonymous stories about sexuality, relationships, embarrassing moments and react to them. We like to call them sex experiences. What's new compared to online searches is that experts are going to offer their precious advice by answering to the most popular experiences. In addition to that, every day a different topic will be suggested in order to keep users engaged. On the app, teenagers can also find interesting content like videos and articles published daily by our certified experts and us. We like to call them sex explanations. Our project falls into the tech market, a sector that has proven its strength even during this time of pandemic. Globally, this market has been valued at $7.5 billion and with 1 billion euros invested in 2019, Europe has registered the biggest growth with plus 36% compared to 2018. It's explained aims at reaching a 5% share in the Italian market that amounts to 2.9 million potential users. Despite access to sexual education being one of the 17 sustainable development goals of the United Nations, Italy is still lacking a successful solution. On the one side, existing apps and websites are informative, but teenagers find them boring. On the other side, pages on social media provide interaction, but most of the times they are not reliable. Sexplain stands out from its competitors by offering both an engaging and certified content. The most similar solutions are based in the US, but they don't provide support from experts and don't plan to expand to Europe. So explain it will be the perfect channel for firms to target a very specific audience and we are going to create sponsored content with selected companies. Our app will be available for free on the main app stores. This, together with an advertising campaign on our users' favorite social media, events and partnerships will allow us to grow a significant user base. For example, we have been able to get more than 3,000 visits to our Instagram page in just one day from its creation. We are planning to launch a web app first to get some initial engagement by our early adopters. In six months, we will develop the app and in one year from then, we plan to reach a critical user base thanks to events, partnerships and social media marketing. This will allow us to start getting revenues. We believe that our model is highly scalable and in the future it can be exported outside of Italy or to a more mature audience. We are asking you to play a role in our project. We will need 40,000 euros that we are going to use for the development and marketing of our app. We're a team of five committed and enthusiastic innovators convinced that change must come from young and motivated people as we are. Invest in us and together we can make the difference. Okay, thanks Paula. We can stop now talking about sex so we can go louder yes uh, thank you very much and uh, okay now we are going to change subject but again another interesting subject that is coming back again and is music music uh, first time we talk about drummers now we're talking about piano players so if you are a piano player and you want to train okay nothing will be any more the same if you now listen to this uh, very interesting pitch of Gradus. Ciao, I'm Nicola from Gradus and in this video I will talk to you about our work. Our project is in the field of music and in details in the field of piano. A big problem for all pianists is being away from the piano and was a problem also for me when I was a piano student. Even a pair of days of training stop can cause damages to your technique and the today life makes it hard to have a piano available for enough hours a day. Our solution is Gradus, 
a smart device with a feedback to the piano strain even when they are away from the piano. Grados is ready to use and it fits all hands and all pianists. In its not complicated configuration, you just have to download our app, connect it via Bluetooth and start training using one of the exercises we designed together with expert pianists. A key point of our product is the feedback. You receive both a live one and a detailed evaluation of your exercise at the end of it. From that evaluation you can understand what are the problems of each of your fingers. Based on that feedback, Grados will then design your personalized training plan in order to suggest to you the exercises that can solve those problems. In order to be well designed for pianists, Grados is designed with pianists. Our product, as well as the exercises you will find in the app, are created together with experts and musicians. In the market, there are already some products that try to solve this problem. They are not smart and they do not provide a feedback. Moreover, Grados is designed with experts in order to be safe and to cause no damages to your hand. About our revenue model, we plan to sell our device at 94 euros, providing a free version of our app to all our customers. A premium version of our app will be available for 2 euros 99 per month for the users that want to have more exercises available. We are now doing research and development in order to have test sales in the January of next year. We plan to have the first real sales in April 2021 and we want to begin from Italy and Europe and to scale up to a worldwide sales in September 2022. Since there are many pianists all over the world, as you can see our potential customers are a lot and worldwide can reach half a million. Now we need you and this is the sound we should reach for further research and development to patent our idea and to reach our first sales. This is our group. It's made of different people with different skills and some of us are also musicians. But we all have the same passion for music and the same goal, making pianist's life simpler. Thank you. And that was uh, D-Block. So, um... Uh, sorry, that was Gradus, uh, which was coached again uh, um, by Natalia uh, Bobova. So congratulations, Natalia, in uh, having uh, two of your team, both of them in the finals. So and now it's time for D-Block. Um, what is D-Block about? So uh, nowadays, easy handling and also sharing of big data is not only, I mean, not topic in the industry, but it's not topic also for worldwide researchers. And uh, we're confident that D-Block will give a meaningful contribution to this because uh, uh, they have great expertise and they also benefit by the expert coaching of their mentor, which is Carlo Pasquini, the CEO of Skipas Go. So without further ado, let's see the video of the team at D-Block. Hello everyone, we are D-Block and today we want to tell you a little story about science. Here is Sarah, European biologist studying virus genomics. On the other side of the ocean, there is Carl, working on a similar project. Carl will highly benefit from the data collected during Sarah's experiments, but when he finally finds out about her, she is skeptical about sharing her data. This is because she's afraid of losing her intellectual property rights. Anyway, she decides to share them. But when Carl received them, the data are not structured as he expected, and when he tries to replicate Sarah's experiments, the results are different. During this story, we have encountered three of the main problems that affect science. First, data ownership. Second, quality of shared data. Third, data traceability. We interviewed several senior researchers, and they all confirmed that these represent a huge obstacle in their job, especially when it comes to experiments replication. It is estimated that 70% of researchers fail to reproduce experiments, a well-known problem within the scientific community. Translated in money term, this is as much as 26 billion euros, which are annually wasted on research that cannot be replicated. And this data refers to the US alone. We decided then to build a solution, the block, the blockchain-based platform for researchers to share and retrieve high-quality scientific data in a simple and traceable way. 90% of the researchers we interviewed want to try our prototype as soon as it's ready. But let's see how it works. 
Researchers can upload their datasets on the DeBlock platform after a machine learning algorithm has checked the quality of the data. This includes the detection of unusual data values and outliers. The blockchain will store information in a decentralized way, assuring data quality and data ownership. It will also track the changes in the datasets and the usage of the data. The dataset will be available to all the block users, and then, through a system of peer review, users provide feedbacks over the quality and the reproducibility of the data. Our solution is even more valuable if we consider some market trends. The number of published scientific papers is grown by almost 50% in the last 10 years, and meanwhile, also the public R&D budget has increased remarkably. These numbers show that scientific research is growing at unprecedented rates. Given the size, of, the size of the problem, others have tried to offer a solution, such as Kaggle, owned by Google, that mainly addresses quality, or also GeneBank, which focuses on traceability and ownership. But we are the only ones using blockchain. This allows us to guarantee data traceability and data ownership, while embedded machine learning and the peer review system will verify data quality, all at the same time. This way, we significantly contribute to reaching higher reproducibility rates. Our main targets are the university departments, and after a cost analysis, we decided to offer the following yearly prices. 60 euro for a single researcher, and then a growing price depending on the size of the department. These prices are actually quite low when compared with, for example, the IEEE data portal, which is the main source of datasets for engineers and costs 70,000 euro per year. We elaborated a 24 months plan. First of all, we will develop the platform that will be ready in September of this year. Then, until May 2021, in order to populate the platform with both users and data, we will offer our infrastructure as a free trial to our partner universities. Our marketing strategy will allow the block to get the first 10 paying departments in November 2021. To start our venture and build the future of trusted data, we need 100,000 euro. With such an investment, we will be able to reach ROI in March 2022. And these are the people that will make this happen. A great blend of technical and business experts. Thank you for your attention. And thank you very much, Federica, for introducing us the block. And now we move from, from deep, deeply rooted blockchain applied to researchers to back to the nature. So now winter is over, we are all focusing on the summer. But reality is that today the industry and the, let's say, administrator are start thinking and planning for the next winter. And let's say the, the road condition is one of the key issues during winter because the administrator can be even sued for bad road condition and dangerous road condition. That's why administration, administrators in business cannot do without Dicer. So let me introduce uh, the, our new startup, Dicer. So please, Andrea, go on. Good evening, everybody. My name is Andrea, and today I have the pleasure to present you our business idea. Snow is fascinating. A little is amazing, but a lot can be a mess. That's why we have salt spreaders. They do have a problem though. Every year a huge amount of salt is wasted, significantly damaging both the surrounding environment and the concrete on our street. The Italian public administration spends every year 50 million in salt, which causes more than 20 million in road maintenance. Trentino to Adige, as you can see from the map, is one of the most impacted regions. These two provinces alone spend every year 7.7 .7 million just in salt and around 1.5 million in road maintenance. We talk a lot with them, as well as with, uh, with other provinces. They are interested and they also provide us data and researches to work on. What we understood was that operators usually decide the, the amount of salt to spread based on their experience. And don't get me wrong, they are good, but this is just not enough to avoid wastings. Tyster is our solution. It's a control system, plug and play, suitable for the majority of spreaders. 
it automatically calculates the right amount of salt to spread based on environmental sensors, letting the, the public administration save up to 10% of salt-related costs. But how does it work? Infrared and humidity sensors attached to the truck send a signal to the control system which automatically adjusts the right amount of salt and send a signal to the spreader which adjusts the quantity. The driver has now less things to care about and just need to drive. But Tester is not only smart in calculation, he can also monitor and report back the situation and the work done via web interface. Data can also be made publicly available so that citizens are informed about the safety on their street. There are other products in the market, for example, Fabricon produces simple and manual control system. There are also automatic solutions, but they unfortunately they require to purchase a costly and completely new truck, no upgrade possible. At Dyster, we value your existing tools and we give them a new brain. We sell our product charging 60 euro a month for the whole season, and we plan to produce up to 2,000 devices in the next four years. We will start locally from Trentino to Adige, and then we will get a share in many other northern provinces. We forecast to develop and test our product on field by April 2021, start the mass production in August, and be ready to sell by October. Then, we will enlarge our customer segment, reaching the break-even point by January 2023. To run our business, we need 85,000 euro to invest in prototyping and testing, marketing and promotion, and a smaller part to, part to cover production costs. So spreading is not exactly what they call a sexy business, but we love challenges. Want to join? This is us, Bogdan, Elena, Andrea, Konstanty, Ting, Zhengju. We are different, international, and a determined team. And we like snow, just not on our streets. Thank you. And that was Dyster, a project uh, which is coached uh, by Lorenzo Modena. So congrats, uh, Lorenzo, two teams on two in the final, uh, exactly like Nadia, so now it's a very, very important moment because uh, Dyster was project number nine and now it's the time for project number 10. So I can see some tension in the air because uh, this is supposed to be the last project going into the finals and for final evaluation for the judges. But um, as a matter of fact, I have a special announcement to make and uh, so it was really, really hard to find the 10 perfect uh, project to bring to the finals. So we fought a lot. Uh, there were disagreements. Uh, also, um, Vittorino called me some names I, that I don't want to repeat here. Uh, but um, and then we finally agreed that we probably need uh, more teams than 10. So we decided to admit not 10, but I'm enthusiastic to say that we admitted 13 teams to the final. So now it's the time for the project number 10th, but uh, stay tuned because there are other three pitches to, to see after the project number 10, okay? So what is project number 10? So we speak about the pandemic again, okay? So we have seen uh, during the lockdown, uh, complex execution of new ventures trying to do home delivery of various goods. So um, who will be win in this highly competitive arena? Um, we don't know for sure, but I myself, uh, I want to place my bets on Buy-in Loco, which is a project which is coached by our Lorenzo Sanna. So let's see their videos. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today, I will be presenting to you Buying Loco, our startup that promotes sustainable local shopping. Unfortunately, the majority of working people between 20 and 55 years old cannot afford the time to go shopping for high quality food at the local market and local shops. They have to go to the supermarket instead. On the other hand, small artisanal shops and market sellers are greatly suffering from this competition. 
they would like to attract more consumers, but very few of them have the resources to establish an e-commerce or to do delivery service. By the way, as our research showed, in the period of coronavirus, 82% of Italians prefer to buy only products that are made in Italy in order to support local economy in this difficult time. Buy Loco is the perfect solution for this problem. It allows you to buy the best food from local shops and markets online. We will bring it to you. Once you're in the app, you can choose between shopping at the local shop or at the local market. Then, you have to choose the category of the product you want to buy, and then the shop or the producer from which you want to buy. Every profile of every seller contains the offer, the story of the shop or the producer, and the reviews from other users. Once you have placed your order, you just have to wait for a writer. For the sellers, Buying Loco also offers the management app, in order to facilitate the management of the orders and the delivery. We promote sustainable delivery, for our writers, we offer competitive wages and ethical labor conditions. Also, we use only ecological transport. Now, the food delivery market in Italy is developing at an incredibly fast pace, reaching almost 1.6 billion euros in Italy last year. During the period of the coronavirus, more and more people that have never used food delivery before start to use these services, while the small shops realize the importance of having e-commerce and delivery tools. Potentially, on the national level, we are targeting 15 million customers and 164,000 shops. We will start off in Trentino, where in the first year we are expecting to attract 4% of the targeted users and 7% of the shops, due to direct sales. Buying Loco occupies an important niche at the interface of food delivery and sustainable consumption. Our direct competitors in Trentino, lacking quality, we don't offer such a wide variety of products as we do. Our revenue model is based on three elements. The shops that become members of our platform pay monthly member subscriptions, which include e-commerce, management app, and delivery. On the other hand, the consumer pays a flat delivery fee or buys a premium account that also allows unlimited orders with no delivery fee. In order to attract customers, we will offer a free monthly trial for the sellers. Consumers will be targeted on social media, while offline we will be distributing flyers with discounts on delivery. We already have a website that you should check out, and we promote our mode product in social media, where you can follow us. The development of the app is ongoing, and we plan to release the beta version in October. In January 21st, we are planning the official launch of our app. Next year, we are planning to move to Veneto, taking the market in Verona and Padova. In 2022, we will expand to other Italian regions. This is our amazing team of highly competent and committed people that have been working very hard to bring Bayern Loco to you. We are asking for 50,000 euros to launch our project. Ci metti poco con Bayern Loco. Metti poco con buy in loco. So from the niche of good food delivered in a sustainable way, we move to another niche, the niche of hobby. Uh, if you like an hobby and you have time to devote to it, it's good. But if you have something, some physical device that help you in uh, making your hobby more joyful, then, then it's great then you enjoy even more, then you can practice even more. And this is exactly the case for passionate painters. So now let's leave the floor to Paintissimo. Yes. Hello everyone. My name is Damiano Melotti and tonight I'm here to present you Paintissimo, a tool meant for people like Maya. Maya is a marketing manager. She works a lot every day and she has very limited time for her hobbies. Among them, she loves painting, but she really struggles to find the occasions to dedicate herself to her artwork. Whenever she does that, she needs to throw away all the paints she was using from her previous session. She needs to say goodbye to that perfect tone she had obtained because it has dried out completely. She has to reprepare all the colors from the beginning, resulting in a waste of paint that is a waste of time because it is difficult to replicate the right combination of tones again, and also a waste of money because of the expensive paints she likes to use. 
We interviewed almost 150 painters worldwide, and we discovered that this problem is very common among them. They have issues with the management of their paints, but also very limited time to set up their painting sessions. So we thought that we could come up with a new, revolutionary solution to help them. Paintissimo is a smart palette, an automatic tool that adjusts the water level required by your paints and will never let them dry out again. It is an automatic product, so it features an embedded electronic board composed by a sensor, a controller and a pump. The sensor detects whenever water needs to be injected into a sponge that will keep the upper layer at the perfect humidity condition. Also, this upper layer can be easily removed and changed whenever needed, and thanks to the refillable tank, the palette will never run out of water. During these months, we developed the 3D model and the mock-up. The palette has very simple controls to regulate the humidity level according to the painter's needs, and also a momentary button to manually trigger the injection of water. We identified our market in miniature and acrylic painters. These painters share the same problems and the same issues with the current tools, and we calculated that we can obtain 28 million of euros in this market. Our competitors are mainly the traditional palettes that do not offer any paint management feature. And then we have the red grass wet palette, which is an, an enhancement of the normal palette that has a sponge that needs to be manually refilled, so it is not very convenient to set up. Instead, our Paintissimo can keep your colors in good condition for days, even weeks, if the environmental conditions are good, and has an hassle free setup. We plan to reach a revenue of 1.4 million of euros in the first 18 months, among the sales of the, of the palettes and their complementary tools. Then, after this period, we plan to launch an online tutorial platform, a completely new and parallel service with master classes given by famous painters, in order to diversify our business and keep it scalable. We plan to sell the palette at a standard price of 35 euros, and when the online platform will be available, we plan to give two months of free membership to whoever buys a new palette. We plan to start our tests with some influencers, some celebrities we have been in contact with and that will also help us in the marketing and advertisement campaign. Thanks to their feedback, we will refine the product and launch it in a Kickstarter campaign by the end of this year. By the beginning of next year, we want to launch our e-commerce platform to have our own channel of sales. By summer of next year, we will reach 30,000 palettes sold and in the meantime, the online service will be ready to be launched by the end of next year. We need your help with 130k for the marketing of the Kickstarter campaign, the launch of the product and the various development costs, and also for filing a patent. We are an international team made of people both from the business and the engineering background, and we have some seriously skilled painters that will help us in meeting the right requirements right at the first prototype. So thank you for your attention and join us in this journey, so that we can make people paint without pain. Okay, and that was Paintissimo, a project coached by Daniele Miorandi, the CEO of U Hopper. And now we are presenting project number 12. Uh, we are close to the end. Um, just a word of advice of all of the other team that are still crossing their finger and thinking whether there be, and hoping that we'll be in the final. So if you didn't get the cut for the final, don't worry about that. Um, first of all, everyone is a winner at Startup Lab uh, Demo Day, but particularly, there are also some prizes that you can get even if you didn't get to the final. Okay, so stay tuned and stay with us till the ceremony, the final ceremony, because there might be surprises. Okay, don't let me say more to this. And now on with the next project. Um, if you think about uh, what happened in the last few years, uh, some uh, last few months, uh, one of your, I mean, memory, which is not close, it's probably related to the struggles of online learning. And um, I think we have to address them quickly to make the education system up and running again. And um, I think there are lots of areas of improvement in online learning. And to be honest, I'm quite tired myself uh, after this online uh, semester. But you know what? Who's not tired yet? It's the next team, it's SchoolNet. So let's see the video of SchoolNet. 
Hi there, I'm Asia from Schoolnet and I'm here to say that you have a problem. How many platforms do you need for teaching? Let me just guess. One for video conferences, one for uploading videos and multimedia contents, one for assignments and homework, and another one for marks and attendances. And like you, 50,000 schools in Italy have the same problem. We talked with 20 principals and interviewed 600 people among teachers and students. And all of them expressed their bother in working with many platforms and websites. Their general question and wish was why don't we use just one? Schoolnet has the solution. We provide the one and only complete online registers that integrates all the functions needed. We provide three versions of it. The basic version contains all the essential features that schools must use for ordinary administration. Then there is the pro version, which includes video conferences, examination functions, and a community network for teachers. And last but not least, the Taylor version is a fully personalized software designed on demand because we work with schools for schools. Of course, there are other companies providing similar services. Most of them, though, are not proper online registers, although they provide useful features that we can integrate. Proper online registers, instead, are lacking some fundamental features and they do not have any user-friendly interface. Schoolnet is the conjunction between these softwares. But let's go down to business. We thought to start from Italy, where there are more than 50,000 schools. They must have an online register and they are charged for licensing 1,000 euros every year. So here we are, ready to gain our share in this tremendously profitable market. We provide the basic version for free, while the Pro and the Taylor version will be charged annually a couple thousand euros. We count on our strong communication strategy and the word of mouth of our partners in order to increase exponentially our turnover. Out of 20 schools we contacted, already 16 of them called us back in order to know about the progresses of our software, especially technical and professional institutes. So by starting working on the project after exams period and launching our startup in September, we'll be able to go to market in March 2021 and in one year we'll reach the break-even point. The genius of Eleonora and Mattias from ICT and the rigor of Marco and Riccardo from engineering represent a potential that cannot fail. Instead, Simone and I will be the faces of the company, dealing with user experience and public relationships. So, here we are today asking you 70,000 euros to be spent in prototyping and communication strategy, promising to double them in less than five years. Now that you know who we are and the value that we want to create, please do not miss the opportunity to be part of our project. We are Schoolnet, for a school with no limits, created with schools for schools. Thank you, Asia, for the nice presentation with schools for schools. Very good. So Asia and her team was uh, mentored by Daniele Basso, so two out of two in the finals. Great, Daniele, on top of having your successful investment round. Now I'm going to introduce uh, the last team. So this team has been uh, mentored by Giovanni Gaglione. Giovanni Gaglione is the CTO of Wonderflow. And Wonderflow last year had a successful investment round of 1.5 million for their startup that uh, say becomes uh, quasi quite uh, successful. M among the main customers are Philips or things by this name. And, um, and this time they are, Giovanni is mentoring an interesting team that probably 
uh, was inspired by me somehow, uh, because there are two teams uh, in this uh, BD Lab 2020 that are targeting aging people. I don't feel uh, so much comfortable about it. Uh, let's say, okay, I feel interested. So definitely I will be very, very focused with my attention on, uh, on the presentation of uh, IGEA. Hi, my name is Jessica and I'm going to be talking about our company, IGEA. Meet Maria. Maria recently celebrated her 70th birthday and she considered herself to be a relatively healthy person. But last summer, she was at the park with her granddaughter and she started to feel really dizzy. She remembered calling her granddaughter's name and suddenly fainting. Her doctor told her she needed to be drinking more water, but Maria rarely feels thirsty and has a hard time remembering to drink water. Maria is one of the 4.2 million Italians aged 65 plus who are chronically dehydrated. Like Maria, many of these people could experience reduced thirst signals, memory loss, as well as dexterity problems all of which affect their ability to drink the proper amount of water. We decided to talk to people who were experiencing these problems, and we found that relatives are the most concerned. We conducted 30 interviews, and we discovered that 69% of people think that their relatives don't drink enough water, 58% aren't able to check in on them frequently enough to make sure that they're drinking enough water, and 100% couldn't think of a solution to this problem. IGEA's vision is to become the first reliable and effective hydration solution for elderly people. We want to help people like Maria have enough energy to play with their grandchildren at the park again. We have created a smart water cup, which has an elderly friendly design, including a spill proof lid and two handles. And we designed this in collaboration with nurses who have the needs of our users in mind. Our cup tracks the total water volume intake in a day and sends personalized reminders to the user through a light up and sound function. The cup works alongside the free application that we offer. And the key feature of our solution is that users can allow their relatives to receive an alert if they don't meet their daily hydration goal. And this allows relatives to make sure their loved ones are staying healthy. Our app works by connecting to the cup through a unique cup ID, and the user can then configure their desired reminder sound, for example, by using a recording of their relative's voice. And they can also use the app to monitor their hydration statistics. So why IGEA? We compared our solution to other smart water bottles on the market and found that we're the only ones that track the water consumption, have an elderly friendly design, offer a free application, and send hydration alerts to relatives. As well as this, Droplet is currently only operating in the UK and Australia, and Hydrate Spark targets a primarily younger audience with their design and sales channels, and they lack the key feature of having an elderly friendly design. We've estimated that our total available market is the 101 million people above the age of 65 in the European Union. We're going to start off by targeting Italy, where there are 12.3 million elderly people. And because our solution works alongside a smartphone, we're targeting the 3.2 million people who currently have smartphones. But this number is projected to grow. Going over our business model, we're estimating that with a target market of 3.2 million people and a unit price of 45 euros, we have potential revenues of 144 million euros. In terms of our online sales channels, we're going to be using Amazon as well as our company website. And we're currently in contact with Italian pharmacies to use as potential offline sales channels. We've actually received confirmation from the Alzheimer's Society of Italy that they are willing to promote our solution to their stakeholders and our potential customers. To give you a brief overview of our timeline, we've spent the last two months validating our idea and the problem, and we're currently at the stage where we're asking for an initial investment of 70,000 euros to cover our startup expenses. This will prepare us to launch in Italy by September of 2020, and by December of 2021, we will have over 7,000 cups sold. By the end of 2021, you'll also reach a positive return on your investment, and by 2022, we will be ready to launch in the rest of the European Union. Our team is composed of people from a variety of different backgrounds, and we're really excited about solving this problem. If you have any questions for us, please feel free to send us an email or visit our website. Thank you very much. Okay, and that's end uh, our presentations for the finals. So congratulations to all the 13 teams uh, making the cut. And uh, well, congrats also to the teams that didn't make it. But please keep in mind that you can still win awards and prizes. So the Hub Innovazione Trentino pre-incubation program is open to everyone. So you can be 
the, um, selected by Avino Mazzone Trentino. The special mention award is open, the best teamwork award is open, and the People Choice Award is open. So now, Gloria, can you put uh, the slide deck? Can you put the slide deck so we can show what's happening next? So now we have one hour break, but uh, the YouTube broadcast will go on with some scheduled uh, um, activities. So uh, you can stay here and watch the real and see videos, highlights from Contamination Lab or whatever. You can comment on the, our live chat. So stay here, don't close the window. And meanwhile, you can uh, also vote for the People's Choice Award. So from now on, you have one hour to vote your favorite project. So just go into the Facebook page, see the video, and click on like or on whatever project you liked. You can vote, or you can also make your project be voted by someone else, someone else so you know what to do. And meanwhile, also for the teams that um, are in the finals, so be ready to discuss uh, in a separate conference room, um, uh, the Q&A session with the judges. So judges will roam around in, in the breakout rooms, just asking uh, questions. So be ready to uh, answer the question of the judges. And uh, so we'll see each other in one hour. So next slide, please. So in one hour, we meet again here at 7. PM for the keynote speech of Yari Onyveni. And after the keynote, then we start the ceremony of the awards. Okay, so I'll see you soon and stay in touch, vote, interact, discuss with the judges, be engaged and be ready for the um, keynote speaker and then the award ceremony. So see you later. See you later at seven. Thank you, see you. Welcome to everyone and um, welcome uh, to the mentors. Hi, Lab Trento. We're going to talk today about problem validation, indolin validation. So, okay, I give you some inputs for the next uh, hours to work on. You can start talking with your team and start working a bit on the javelin board. Daniel Mirandi, CEO of UHopper, a local company specialized in big data analytics solution. My name is Nadia Bobova. I am a CEO of uh, innovative startup KMB Lab, specialized in uh, IoT smart solutions. The first one is really to kind of give back to the local system, which supported us a lot in the past, and uh, I just want to basically help it. Well, actually, in my uh, life of uh, entrepreneur, uh, I did a lot of mistakes. I feel that I'm ready to share my experience with, uh, with someone else and uh, to try uh, to make them avoid my mistakes. The first one uh, is uh, to reach an agreement on expectations. Do you want to win Startup Lab? Do you want to get away with a minimum mark? Just make sure that everybody's aligned in terms of expectation. Be active and be prompt to any challenge that you have during this journey. Be open to uh, all new stuff that you meet and to all the people and ideas and opinions uh, that you get in touch with. Davide Bulbarelli, 
I'm a master student uh, of uh, computer science at uh, the University of Trento. I'm Gabriel Frank, and I am uh, a PhD student uh, and researcher at FBK, and I'm doing machine learning stuff. I was a, a student of the Startup Lab, and uh, I learned a lot of things about uh, business, uh, startups, uh, and uh, finding creative solutions. I did Startup Lab two years ago, and it was uh, a wonderful experience. It's a crazy place. Uh, C-Lab is the place where you find people that are passionate about uh, uh, both technology and business, I would say. So when I attended the, the course, uh, everyone in my team uh, was taking care of the idea with the strong motivation. And uh, all with different roles uh, and all the essentials uh, for the growing of the, of the startup. We printed the um, t-shirts for our team and that really helped us bond together. And uh, we spent uh, a lot of time uh, doing a lot of crazy stuff at C-Labs. Hi, my name is Eduardo Guerrieri. I'm part of Jellify's investment team. Um, I originally uh, started working uh, in startups and I come from the biotech field, the medtech the med field, and eventually moved on to the insurtech field. So I think the most important facts about my uh, you know, career today is that it's based on the knowledge I gained working in startups in, my, in the beginning of my career. That gave me the chance, you know, seeing everything from the inside and knowing exactly what the cool things are, what the bad things are, what to avoid. And, you know, I use this today in my investment. So the opportunities I see, uh, you know, for new startups in this moment in time is that you are living in a moment that is desperate search for change. You have the chance to rewrite new business models and use new tech to solve the issues that are present today. Um, if you think about the old crisis in 2007, 2008, that's when the Airbnbs and that's when, when their Ubers were born. So you see how those companies were born. You have the same chance to do this today. Number one, um, knowledge. Know your field like the back of your hand. Uh, number two, uh, open communication with your start with the people in your startup, with the investors, with your clients, with your network, and uh, number three, the ability to move quick and to fail fast. You have to be able to test your product as quickly as possible. And if it's good, awesome. If it's not good, fail. It's fine to fail. Just fail quick so you don't lose time. So. Um... Thank you very much. If you, I mean, um, Alessandro or Gloria, if you lost my connection or the audio, please um, put me a message or even call me because then I will lose. So thank you very much for the invitation. I will take, you know, the next uh, few minutes. Um, I know everybody are waiting for the final response of the jury. And uh, I got the chance to see a few of the pitches during the, during the afternoon. I think that the, the level, it, it's very good. So I think you guys have did an incredible job. And of course, you team, uh, you just did the first part of your job. Okay. So, but it was very good. So congratulations for everybody. So um, let me see if I can share it from here. Okay, good. Okay. I, I will like to, you know, share with you a few, you know, uh, a story basically about me, what I'm doing right now, why why I'm an investor and what I do in my, let's say, daily job and um, why I'm doing this in Italy because it's pretty much interesting and important to share why in Italy uh, being a deep tech investor. And then um, on the end of the presentation, I really like to, you know, give you a very, let's say, uh, handout uh, message uh, for especially for the people that are building um, a company based on a physical product. Of course, that every product should include any kind of intelligence or software, but everybody that is building hardware um, is my friend right now. So 
Um, with this method, it's just, you know, uh, some nuts and bolts to understand uh, how to tackle, how to approach uh, uh, hardware startup development and a company based on a product like hardware um, to be developed. But then, of course, this is a metrics message for you. I'm pretty much available between uh, uh, Trento, Milan, and California usually. But you can reach me out for any point you've got any interest or any difficulties or any, any feedback you want to share. I'm very appreciated. So this is me. Um, I'm uh, a business angel, a very active business angel in the last, uh, let's say, seven, seven years, let's say, that I've made uh, more than 40 investments. Uh, I made investment like uh, uh, on every sector and pretty much sector agnostic as a business angel. So I usually sign the first check into the company with uh, probably with other, of course, with other angels with me, but I'm pretty much interested on everything happening around the world from consumer products to let's say medical, pharmaceutical, and of course, uh, uh, some, some uh, digital stuff. Uh, then I'm a deep tech investor at Pariter. Uh, I will uh, guide you through a bit um, uh, any more detail about Pariter partners because I think uh, we did an incredible job in the last um, two years and a half, me and my partner, uh, uh, Matteo. And, um, and of course, I'm born in Trento, I'm 38. And, um, and as I say, I'm proud Italian, but I believe in the work, okay? Um, so this is where I start, okay? Uh, I was just born in a, this small village is where I'm now, right now, in my quarantine. Um, and um, in, uh, from here, my dreams, my activity was everything related to, to a big dream. The big dream, let's say, was California, okay? Everybody's dreaming California, okay? But um, the, this message, I just want to say that if you really dream big, if you really play hard, you can make it. So I want to guide you through my experience as an early stage investor. Just to be, um, I really like to put you, you know, some, um, the, my key driver, let's say today, um, I pretty much love to connect to people. Uh, you know, I'm a very positive guy and I, I, I want to be helpful. You know, I'm pretty much the guy that put my hand to help you out on, on every case. Um, I really like my, my approach is to, let's say, empowering solution maker. Okay, I'm pretty much a strange entrepreneur guy, you know, but I really like the people building stuff. And I really love to, you know, fund entrepreneur, means bringing, bringing money, putting money into action and take a long back into technology and science to make probably this, uh, this world a better place. I really like to, you know, um, uh, the breaching the missing competence and what I'm saying, the, the partially allocated resources. So this means we are living in a world where, where everything is accessible from capital to talent to know-how, but many times it's allocated in, in not in a good way, an efficient way. And I pretty much, I'm the guy that I really like to put this more into action. And I love to be an operator of change, let's say, I'm very active in my investment. I'm very active in my investor community, both in Italy and outside Italy. And um, I really see myself as a guy that really builds stuff, do stuff, and to help other choose it. What I will bring you out is um, I have, you know, these keywords in my mind every day. The keyword is infrastructure. You know, uh, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a scientist, if you are a teacher, or if you are an investor like me, the key driver and let's say the key point to work on, on your career, on your professionality, is building the infrastructure. The infrastructure in, uh, in my case is the following, and I will show you what this means, infrastructure, in my uh, work as an investor. At Pariter Partners, uh, we funded uh, 2018, so roughly two years and a half ago. And uh, me and my partner, Mateo, we love to invest in early stage company and fund what we call entrepreneurial science. Who's the entrepreneurial scientist? Is a guy pretty much involved into science and technology? Is he or she working into, uh, is a PhD or working in university? Or is a guy in the garage loving to build stuff, okay? And uh, we pretty much work in the, and invest in a very early stage. This means we would like to invest from everything between talent and the foundation of a company. And of course, 
Also, after the foundational company means that if there's already a company funded, we're pretty much okay. We are good to or okay to invest on that. Um, just to give you a, a, a bit of background, um, in the last couple of years, on this target, on this focus on working on entrepreneurial scientists, we, we invested more than 600,000 euro by ourselves and by a group of uh, right now more than 200 investors that we manage on our proprietary online platform. And um, we invested in four great and you know, amazing teams working from uh, Flip, like uh, Flip technology, working on printed electronics and new material to uh, build the next generation of sustainable electronics. Prebiomics. Prebiomics is a company, um, uh, is a startup from C uh, Chibio, is from the uh, University of Trento. Very proud of these guys <laughs> from Trento. And they are building, you know, uh, machine learning and AI for uh, oral microbiome analysis. We got Fresco Frigo. Fresco Frigo is the next generation of store. It's a kind of a smart fridge you can put in every, every condos, every house every city, every, every area of, of, of the city where you live on an urban development, and you can deploy a store uh, locally, uh, plug and play, basically. And then there's Checkout Technology, is a company working on artificial intelligence for automation of checkout, means the, the Amazon Go, means you go into a shop to the grocery store, you pick up your stuff, and you can walk, just walk out without, without caring to pass your car or to give money. Uh, to uh, to on the checkout, and uh, we did already the first exit. Basically, this uh, very proud me with this this April, uh, May. We announced that Standard Cognition Corporation acquired the checkout technology, and I'm very proud of that. And this is for me is the uh, is the leap from the small Trento to California because we created this opportunity, and we are very proud that we got the chance to attract. Uh, a billion company uh, established and uh, based in San Francisco, like Stagar, to acquire the team, but continuing their expansion in Europe from Milan. And uh, I'm very proud of that. So um, this is my introduction. I mean, so what we do, uh, our targets, uh, what, what kind of technology and company we would like to get engaged with and invest. But there's a, a bit of background I would like to share. And this is very important for you because many of you are coming outside Italy. Many of you are Italian, of course, but I would like to bring you through why Italy is the right place right now to start a deep tech company. Few numbers, focus just on the arrow. We are the ninth largest economy, okay? Specializing in the three main sectors, robotic, healthcare, technology. So we are one of the top economy. Um, yep. Yeah, sorry, um, I'm just uh, intruding because uh, I'm not sure whether your the audio is super, but we are not sure whether you're showing slides because we are stuck into the first slide. Oh God! Okay, wait a second. Oh, okay. Let me start from here. Okay, so now now we don't see any slide at all. This is uh, il bello della diretta. Yes. Um, let me do like this, if you see it. Uh, let's try to do this. Okay, super. Now we see mm. slides. Okay. I will keep it like that, okay? Okay, good. Okay. So, um, we, you were stuck on the first line, so you missed all the interesting part. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, I guide you just through, you know, my, my recent experience and my work every day as an early stage deep tech investor. But right now, I really like to focus on the, the, the two messages. This is the first. The first message for all the, or all the C-labbers and all the future entrepreneurs we got in the audience and participated to to the event today, uh, I would really like to spend one minute about why Italy is the next destination for both talent, technology, and capital to be uh, put together in the next uh, in the next years. Basically, Italy is the ninth largest economy, specialized on everything related to high tech. Uh, we we do more than six zero point six trillion um, of export of goods. We are very good producer and export every day, every everywhere in the world, and we have. Roughly 50,000 engineers um, 
Broadway each year, uh, and probably there are more because they grow uh, roughly two uh, on, on two on two numbers on um, every year. And then we have this is very interesting. We have more than 160,000 uh, requests of patent uh, per year, basically. So basically, we are pretty much a, a good country where talent can grow with IP technology and looking outside to attract and uh, capital and clients on the world. Um, just few, you know, few charts. I mean, we are not in the in the top chart, but we are in the second one. But let's say that Italy is the 11th best country to invest. This is a re very recent research from uh, Deal Room, is a um, data company, data analyzing company, very famous in our sector, in our uh, investor sector, and they put Italy in the in the 11th position. So this is very good. I mean, we are not in the top chart, but we can raise to the chart, top chart, okay? And of course, we have a um, um, uh, country like France, more than 5 billion a year, they invest into VC. We are roughly 0 0.5, so half a billion, but I mean, we are growing and we can uh, expect to, <laughs> to jump on the, on the upper graph. Um, another interesting part is that Europe, is pretty much the going play the place to be and to go in order to understanding and um, investing in a, a manufacturing business model and of course to invest into let's say deep tech as a keyword. So what does this mean? This means that a lot of capital is going and will come to Europe, probably come back to Europe to invest into companies that build technology based on science. They're working on let's say deep tech sector. So we're very high technology with very long-term return probably. And this is a very, very good sign. Of course, the number of, uh, if we take a look at the number of scientists and engineers in Italy, it's not so bad. I mean, I mean, we are just at the top right of the chart, of this chart, it is not so bad. Also on an investor standpoint, it's very interesting to understand and as an investor, the capital return you can obtain on investing in specific sector, you know? For example, here we have <clears throat> the return on deep tech. So the capital investment in deep tech returned 2.8 times. So roughly three times the investment made into deep tech company returned um, three times the investment, okay? So this is a very, very good number. And the last slide is say that, uh, you know, Milan is a, another time is in the 11th position on the 12, 20 apps in Europe. So I, I, I lived in Milan for many years and right now also my company is based in Milan. And I can, I can say to you uh, that um, things are moving very fast. And there's, of course, we got this, you know, uh, lockdown and stop by the COVID, but, but Milan is becoming one of the top destinations Europe to do business and to start a company. And this is a very, very good sign for everybody. Okay, so I wanna give you more um, nuts and bolts on my infrastructure, let's say. So what did I invest in and prepare to be ready to understand the market, to sell my product, means defining and scouting the best company, the best team and providing the best value on top of capital. and. Um, this is my infrastructure, let's say. So in parity, we were pretty much 360 degrees from the top of the chart on the top of the, on left, we got the science lab. Science lab is the way we interact with the early stage team and with um, R&D center and uh, academies, where we try to provide value, advise team, and of course, understand if someone want to jump out and start it account. Then we have, let's say, what I call the war machine. Pariter is a syndicate um, investment. Means that we, on each deal and each team we like and we choose to invest in, we collect a number of tens of other investors with us into the syndication. Syndication, you can understand it is called, is like, a, is, is a club deal. So it means it's a company specific uh, funded to collect the capital and invest in the, into the target company. And then we have Pariter Equity. Pariter Equity is our last product. It's the more one on the, on the right on the slide. And um, it's basically a syndicating platform authorized by Consob, by the financial, Italian Financial Authority. These provide us 
the full capacity, full speed to promote the deal in Italy and Europe. So to promote team and company we want to invest in Italy and Europe and to collect capital from Italian investor, but of course from international one. On each deal, of course, uh, we are pretty much ready. Okay, we are uh, what I call we have a roughly automated process uh, uh, on how we scout, how we choose, and how we invest into deals. But everything, uh, everything starts from scratch. Okay, so what we do is sitting on the side of team, understanding and reading the market, talking to a many operator and many people outside in the market, working on a specific industry on the specific sector we are interested in that period and we really start building hypotheses learning doing our research and this is how we start of course we do um, apply it from the scratch phase we apply methodology uh, just to give an idea that this methodology provides us the chance to read early signal of teams that are working on technology ips so patents or interesting market that are upcoming and one of the last results is what I call from lab zero to multi-million company is Flip Technology, where we invested roughly uh, close to 1 million in the, these months of April, in the month of April, in a company working on um, uh, printed electronics, so the future of organic recyclable electronics. So, Alessandro, everything good? You hear me? Loud and clear. Oh, fantastic. Good, good, good. Um, okay, now it's your time. Um, um, we don't have too much time. Usually I take this, um, this lesson on, on a full morning, but they're four hours basically. But I take out some extract and some hints just to give you an idea on what the key focus on teams and on company building, building hardware, building a physical product. Okay, a technology product. Okay, so um, everything starts with a, what I call a symphony. You know, building a company is a symphony. It means that you got upside, downside. You just uh, say, okay, you just have to follow, follow, follow the road, follow the rules. But uh, many times this happened that uh, it's not so easy building a company. This is SpaceX. Uh, if I put it on the full screen, is a gift. So you got this, the the rocket exploding. But just to give you that. Building a company is very hard. And of course, especially, I got the chance to experience in their last five years that building hardware companies is really hard, okay? And I really want to give you, in the few minutes I have, one key focus, one message to focus on the next weeks and um, to take, you have to take care, you can take care on defining and refining and understanding if your product, if your company will succeed, want to go to go on in the development. And this is basically the manufacturing process. That in my experience, I said that and I, I, I saw that 90% of the failure on teams, on company, stays in the manufacturing process. So stay in the fact where you define what you want to build, define the functionality and the characteristic of your product, hardware, software, or service and then put it into um, the production line and building hundreds, thousands of these pieces, okay? Many times hardware company fail because basically uh, you create something that cannot be manufactured. <laughs> it's not so, uh, sounds easy, but it's like that. Many times you build something that cannot be replicable in at a reasonable cost. You didn't probably prototyping enough. Prototyping means creating working or not working version of your product in a very early stage just to test the, test the functionality, test how the people react. And probably you didn't prototype enough. You didn't manage probably product cost and gross margin. So you didn't make your, let's say, uh, homework in terms of financial on top of the product. And then I show you later. Regulatory and certification. Probably your product should be regulated by some kind of um, regulatory uh, organization or should be certified as an electronic product. Probably choose your product partner or the offshore manufacturing wrong. So you choose to go to China too fast and finding the wrong partner. 
and the evaluation of this factory was wrong. And uh, going down at the night is being on schedule. Many times the schedule doesn't exist anymore uh, on a hardware company. Okay, so um, this, as I mentioned, is part of my, um, of my lesson I take on hardware development, on hardware startup development. And uh, I really want to give you this equation. This is a very simple equation, and I'm not an engineer. Um, I study economics, so, but I'm pretty much interested on everything related to technology and, uh, uh, and that it's complex. But this is my way to understand and to, let's say, uh, summarize all the aspects and all the um, components of building, of the phase of building a hardware company. So basically the equation is simple. On every hardware startups, you got three main parts. You got the specific on the hardware. So basically you got what the product should do, what the functionality, what problem solve this product in the hand of the customer. Then you got the margin. You have to take care of margin means understanding what the product costs to be built, the maintenance, and all the cost of the company should be covered, at least partially, by the selling of the, of the product. And then you got the first part. On every hardware startup, you got this guy at the end of the equation. That is the contract manufacturer. It's the guy that will build for you or with you the product. What happened in the hardware startup is that what we call the, uh, usually is the manufacturing hell. Imagine that basically you start uh, with some prototyping, you got a very rough uh, version of your, of your product. And then of course, you wanna start building more than one pieces of this, of this product, okay? This is what happened. This is the manufacturing hell. So this is the curve where all the bad things happen. What happened basically? It's happened that in the first, in the majority of the curve, imagine that up to 10,000 or tens of thousands of the pieces you will build, you will burn money. So money is your key driver. So money means money on cash on bank, basically, okay? Uh, <laughs> real money to pay for components, to pay for running of the company, to pay, to pay for the manufacturing of the product. And then, a hardware startup is making money just on the last part of the curve. So basically at the end of the manufacturing hell. Just to focus on the first part where basically the company is burning a lot of money building the first tens of pieces, hundred of pieces, thousand of pieces. Okay, basically what we say equity pay the production means the cash you got on bank, liquidity pay for production. So there's no tricky part. So you have to be ready to pay for each part, for each product is coming out from the factory, okay? You have to be care, careful about the margin, of course, because that product should be sold to a multiplier of the cost, 2.5, three, four times, it depends, okay? You got tooling, means that every time you start a hardware company and building stuff, you have to take care of tooling. Tooling are the component and the infrastructure that you need to build the product. For example, the injection molding, okay? You don't have economies of scale. You got startup overflow. And of course, the burn rate is skyrocketing. It's going up like hell. And your, your goal is to keep it low. Then on the second part of the last part of the manufacturing hell, of course, probably you can see some economies of scale. And of course, you can um, sustain the production with the sales, with the margin on the sale. So it's very interesting to say that uh, about the scalability, you know, because at this point, many investors don't invest in hardware because hardware don't scale. But it's not so true, basically. Hardware can scale, means that you can build a scalable hardware company when, of course, on top of going becoming larger and larger, you don't have the increasing on an efficiency on the increasing of the cost, but you can sustain this growth. And I think you can with some tricks. As my, this is my great friend, Scott uh, from Boston, a founder of Dragon Innovation, is, is a guy that run uh, iRobot first funding team uh, in Boston and uh, in Hong Kong. And he's a product guy, hardware guy. And, and uh, he gave me this, let's say, approach. It's called the one for two. Many times, or let's say, when you 
approach building a hardware company and building a hardware, what you should take in mind is the fact that with every hardware you sell, you collect the money to build at least two new products. This is one for two, means that the margin on a single sale can pay the production for at least two new products. And this approach is used from, on, on many companies, but especially early stage hardware startup. And this is the one method that I really want to give you. So think when, when you define the cost of your product, defining the margin, think that the, the margin on the sale should pay and should make sustainable the production of at least two new products. And this makes the project scalable. Okay, so um, when we were talking about, uh, as we talked early on the fantastic equation, specific the margin and the contract, everything is going into a very, very detailed um, checklist. This is one, one checklist I developed in the years helping hardware startups, but this gives you the, the magnitude of the difficulties and of the quantity of stuff you should take care not only on the business, okay? So from the finance to the IP, communication, marketing, and funding, but of course on the products. And the products take, is taking the majority of the resources of the time, okay? And in products, in my experience, I divided it into this section from, let's say, the discovery phase to design to engineering, tuning, and production. Good. So. Another interesting slide, just to you know, familiarize and uh, having you know some interesting key points to take out and uh, refine in the next days or weeks, is that in the manufacturing process, as I let's say um, simplified, is taking care as the three part of the equation above. So you got the specific, you got the margin, you got the process. So the contract manufacturing, and it's the same here in the this is the, the split and the explosion of the manufacturing process. So basically you start with a product. So you start with the ma material, you start with, let's say specific <coughs> to material. <coughs> you start with material. So you start basically with defining and designing <coughs> a product. Then you go into what we call the specification phase. So you try to get ready to talk with a contract manufacturer or addressing by yourself the production. So you take care about specification. And then you got a process part where you basically take care of the contract manufacturer. I will show you then later in the, in the detail, but um, it's interesting to say that many times you are approaching a hardware company, you're starting a hardware company, um, you underestimate the time you need to go to market. The time you need the first product can go on the shelf on the Apple store, <laughs> maybe lucky you, or in the hand of your customer. So expect at least two years from the moment you start building a company. And these two years can go over and over because as I mentioned, one of the risks that many time emerges don't be on schedule. So expect that when the, from the moment you start from the, to the moment that someone will have a rough version of your product on your hand at least a couple of years. But why a couple of years? Because you need all this time, you know? There's, in my experience, there's this kind of division, okay? You got the first part, so few months of iteration. So you prototype, you understand <clears throat> if your clients uh, want to use it, you define a user persona, you bring out some early version of the, of the, of the product. Then you jump into a uh, 12 month period, at least, where you got to hone and to define all the specific of the product. The DFM or the design for manufacturing, you design, you define all the specific about the product, the product components, how the product is assembled and how the product can be produced at the manufacturer and tested on the quality, for example. And then you have, let's say, more and more months later to polish, basically to make sure that all the assumptions you made can be put it into a product that can be built at a reasonable cost. You can make the margin and you, of course, 
can put a product that can be reliable, can work and function in the hand of your, of your customer, okay? <clears throat> Also, when in, in, my, in our work, we, we use this, um, this very simple chart to define the stage and the process where a company is going through uh, basically um, uh, the development of their business, okay? And this is just to give you the understanding that in every part where you start basically discovering the user persona, the needs of the market, you talk to people, then you start putting everything these on the creation part. And the creation part is divided into two sides. One side more related to basically high level specification and two related to the customer experience. And on the other part is more related to the backbone of the product, the engineering part, the firmware. And the goal is to arrive to a validation. What is a validation on the hardware? It means that you put together your assumption on the market and on the need, you put it into something that works and you bring on the hand of the, of the customer for the first time to understand. It. Then after the validation, you can work on building the product, you polish the you hone and you um, collect many feedback of course. And then of course, it's starting after building the product, you, you can deliver by shipping or uh, direct to consumer shipping, or and of course, this start off with the customer support phase. All this to say, um, not so much complicated, but I just want to give you, let's say, um, a lot of hope means that if I understood uh, how to build hardware without being a mechatronic engineer, it's a good sign. It means that everything can be can be done. And my final message, I started with the SpaceX rocket exploding on the, on the barge in the middle of the ocean, but then we can end uh, with SpaceX uh, bringing the first, uh, the first private space, private uh, um, um, astronauts on space, me saying that you have to be ready to take a long shot. Means that uh, building a hardware company or building a company based on a product require a lot of time, a lot of effort, but you have the time at your side. And if you have time, <clears throat> you can take a long shot and you can take and you can think bigger than the other. And on the conclusion, say that I'm here to help, of course, to help you doing this big long shot and uh, be bold and think big. So um, thank you very much for, for the attention. Hope you got all the message and um, uh, good luck for the final results of the of the challenge, and uh, all the best, all the luck for all of you guys. Okay, super. Thanks, Yari, for the great uh, speech. I'm sure that uh, there are people in the audience uh, in the YouTube that uh, want to ask uh, something. So uh, please uh, take advantage of the chat, and uh, I will moderate the question for you. But I know that Vittorino is, uh, I mean, eager to ask the first question. Come on, I want to, to break the, the ice. Uh, uh, Yari, what is the uh, average amount you, you invest on, on each? You said uh, 600 out of four, so kind of a 200,000, 100,000, this is the, the range the amount? Yes, the range it's uh, let's say a range of two hundred thousand. Um, it's a it's a good range of investment because it gives us the chance and the push to um, attract other investors into the deal we are looking, of course. And this gives us the chance, of course, to keep the exposure to the risk uh, on the project um, pretty low, let's say. Because uh, imagine that uh, when we build the syndicate, it means that. We build a specific company that got the only goal to collect money and invest into the target one, okay? And this gives uh, to the investor the chance to, let's say, put a very small amount of money into the single bet, into the single target company. And this for us, investing in deep tech, so investing in company that can take seven, eight, 10, 15, or 20 years to return, can give to the investor more, let's say, um, they are more relaxed, let's say, to invest a small amount into more deals because, you know, it's just a matter of statistics at this stage. Um, and uh, this is a very interesting model to invest specifically in this bank. 
and you and you start investing as you say you start from scratch or you invest uh, really early stage basically both um both. we created as i mentioned uh, we created our infrastructure start from science lab science lab is our yeah. um is our program that we used to engage with early early stage teams not companies teams that are probably still in the in the in the university or in the research center and we help them out to understand the trajectory to become entrepreneur then of course we are ready to invest on every stage from seed to series a so um, we go to the notary together with the team we invest but up to a company that uh, is making already money we are pretty good to invest great okay any other anybody in the chat because i can Make questions for a lifetime. Huh? No, no, yes. Shoot <laughs> me, topic. <laughs> Shoot me or on stop the, me. You can go ahead. On, on this topic, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's, I, I love it. I love it. Okay, so if there is no other question, I, I sorry, so you, wow. I, I insist. So uh, you have an interesting chart. You said uh, three months plus twelve plus twelve. So three, then uh, not. So uh, I think you you make some. Um, uh, how to say? We call it in the in the, in the two wheelers. We call it field test. So, do you make a test with uh, a few hundreds or or or? Yeah, of course. Uh, the, at the, which the, stage? Yeah. When uh, after after yeah. fifteen from beginning after yeah. Yeah, basically, um, this is a, the stage where you should have something to show to the market, to the client, and something to leave to the client, okay? <laughs> of course, and this is the stage where it's not pretty much in the early phase. It's where, let's say, between the, uh, let's say, before going into the large-scale production, where you are still in the, let's say, small batches or what we call beta series. Of course, this is the phase where you have to build tens of your product and you have to test it. And the best way to test it is to, provided directly to your clients and directly to on the market. And this phase basically occur before going and, you know, pushing the button on going large scale and on starting the first uh, thousand or few thousand or tens of thousand batch uh, pieces, batches of, of, of pieces on the manufacturing side. And this happened uh, also for the, the reason that what you call field test is also a matter on certification, on the durability of the product. On, of course, you should validate your hypothesis, and the best way to validate it is to give the product to the customer and let them go home and see what happens. In yeah. this, you, you do, let's say, in the 3 plus 12 plus 12, you do after 3 plus 12 or, or earlier than that? The earlier than that. Tenths. Early than that, because than that. My, my vision um, um, is to bring the product as early as possible. Also on a very early version, something you put up on, uh, uh, with, uh, with tape, but bring it early to clients. And because the market, it's, uh, it's pretty strange. And I, I, I'm sure you know it because many times we, we put a lot of effort, effort to polish, to make something perfect. But then at the end, the, the customers look at you and look at the person, hey, I want to uh, totally another color. What do you do like that? You know? So the, the chance is to get out early because the market, if you describe and if you educate the market about the fact that you are going out early to provide later a better product, the market is ready to help. And this is fantastic because especially in the first part of the, on the, on the uh, let's say, company journey, the first goal is to attract a community of people, a community of customer, early customer, but a community of people that really love to help you out. And this card was, I mean, this, this approach came from the old experience, from the uh, crowdfunding campaign, from the Kickstarter to the Indiegogo. They got this chance to say, I'm here to help. I'm here to pay your products. Then maybe in a few years, you can ship it to, to my door, but I'm here to help. And uh, this is approach that very, I mean, it helps a lot. In my chart, in my last chart, there's the two parts that are very important. They are the works like prototype and the looks like prototype. So, um, my experience is to get out with a looks like prototype. So you show something that doesn't work. I mean, you got probably a roughly idea on paper that this should work, but you can put it in the hand of the people. I just to give you a background on flip technologies, 
uh, we invested roughly a million, but the first product we take out to customer, to potential customer, was a looks like prototype. So we bring them a printed board, but we say to them, hey, we don't know if this will work 100%, but imagine what can you do with this kind of electronic? And this unlocked a lot of feedback, a lot of untapped questions, and this helped a lot to work, to go through the works like prototype, and then to the first beta series, gamma, and of course, to the, basically to the final production of the product. Okay. Interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yari. Very good. Okay. So Yari, congrats on the recent exit uh, uh, of Checkout Technologies. And uh, I mean, uh, also for the great pivot of Fresco Frigo. So you were, I mean, very close to launching and then the quarantine and lockdown came out. So, I mean, your Fresco Frigo, uh, there were no, 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 no corporate that wanted their, I mean, the fridge, you, you couldn't install the refrigerator in the companies. So you pivoted uh, um, <laughs> installing in the condos. So yeah, this is a, I mean, you, you touched a couple of very good message that every, every company, every entrepreneur should keep in mind that everything can happen on the next day. So be ready about everything. <laughs> and uh, on the two story you mentioned on Checkout, we are very proud of that. Checkout Technology is a company that started, let's say earlier than the company that bought, than standard cognition. They raised a, a few million euro uh, related to standard. They raised um, more than 80 million. And then at the end happened that this US company uh, acquired Checkout, okay? But um, this can sound, like say the typical Italian story say, okay, you try to grow, you try to make your business, but then suddenly um, someone should buy you out, okay? But I'm not so sad. I'm very happy about uh, one point that we start uh, um, writing a new story for Italian talent and for high tech and deep tech company from Italy. This means that there's an Italian way to accomplish and to be successful, okay? And this is a, a way that, okay, is not so, so romantic to say, okay, we scale from Italy and becoming a billion company, but it's still a good story that can stimulate the people to continue learning uh, engineering, AI, machine learning, building their company, and be sure that from what they have built from Italy, they will continue a legacy of new entrepreneur coming and new people investing and uh, on building something that will go come from Italy to the world. And that's a one very good message. On the second part of Fresco Frigo, everything happened. Imagine this COVID phase. Nobody uh, 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 have even thought that uh, things like that can happen. But then the company was very good to understand and coming back to their feet learning about the work that have been done in the months, in the years, and you know, pivoting and moving quick on a new target, let's say. So uh, these are two great story and um, this can teach to uh, you and becoming entrepreneur to be ready because everything can happen, but be fine that uh, if you are doing that, you are smart and you can accomplish that. Okay, thanks. Uh, super. Uh, any last comment, Vittorino? Otherwise, I think we can move uh, to, um, to the, um, the final session. Yes, because oh, I there are questions. That... I'm sorry, there, there are questions. Uh, oh, yes, from in, uh, in, uh, in, so there's Julia, that, which is asking, uh, uh, if you have big changes between beta and actual version, how do you update certification like CE, UNI, and Roho? So, or do you do only after development? Is it possible to test without it, so without certification? Very technical yes, question. Of oh, yes, of course. And um, my answer is not technical, so take it like that. Means that basically on your, um, uh, on your perimeter of a company, on, of your early stage uh, customer, Basically, you can do whatever you want and you have to do it because if you wait to be certified to, be certified, to accomplish a kind of, uh, let's say, phase of development on the company, uh, it's probably too late. So 
what you have to take care is okay to having someone very good to help you out on the certification side. But on the other side, don't be scared to get out, of course, inform your early, early customer, early user about that. And um, this, can, this can help you move fast and don't lose too much time on that. Okay, super. So I think we time is up. And uh, thanks again, Yari. And we need to move uh, to the, um, the final session, which is the award ceremony. Um, so um, let's see whether we have some slides to introduce this. Okay, here on the slide, and this is the award the ceremony. So. Uh, so congratulations so far for being uh, here. And uh, so let's move on with the first prize. Okay, so uh, the first prize is a special mention award. So what is this special mention award? It is uh, an award which is given by the jury to the best semifinalists. So or among the 10 uh, teams that did not make the cut for the final, uh, final presentation, okay? So, but the jury also, they reviewed also all the other team uh, presentation and have a special mention award to give uh, to this. So, introducing uh, this award, I have uh, Christian Giacom from Trentino Sviluppo. So Christian, I kindly ask you if you can switch on your um, microphone and the camera and you can introduce uh, this uh, award and um, announce also the winner. Thank you. I don't see Christian, by the way, still uh, in uh, our conference. Uh, I can. Uh, I can. Can, can, can we ask? Can we ask uh, Susanna Zuccarini from Invitalia if she can uh, uh, another juror if she can uh, um, give out uh, the award? Thank you so much, Susanna. Yes. Okay. Um... Okay, um, uh, one moment. <laughs> uh, okay. So here is Christian. So maybe Christian can uh, ah, okay, uh, okay. fill in with the. Uh, okay, this is uh, uh, Christian Giacom from uh, Trentino Sviluppo. So, Christian, can you open the microphone and uh, so announce the winner for the special mention award? Thank you. Yeah, sure. Sorry, just like small technical problems. So it's been really hard, but we finally reached like a name and the special mention award for a series of reasons that I will explain later on goes to Booksaver. So I can hear like screams of joy from the team. And why did we choose Booksaver? Because actually, it has been a very simple and straight presentation. We liked it a lot. A very nice, clear business plan. And the idea is that like, it's for every student, it's for every family that wants to save some money. And they've been very brave because they dare to challenge Libraccio, which is a kind of like a super huge name in the Italian secondhand bookstore. So congratulations to Booksaver and please make your project come a real, a real startup. Thank you. Thank you, Christian. So actually this is a very nice uh, pitch. So if you haven't seen it, uh, go connect to your, our Facebook account and see the pitch of uh, Booksaver. And now we move to the next award. Which is the best teamwork award. So this is a special um, award which is given by the junior mentors. So every team has been assigned a senior mentor, but then we also had uh, five uh, passionate junior mentor which were roaming around uh, and um, supporting all the teams. 
Um, so uh, they decided that the, the best teamwork award award goes to Dicer Melting Ice. Congratulations, guys! You really deserve it. And um, congrats again. And uh, let's move on to the next uh, award now. So, I mean, this is the People's Choice Award. So, lots of struggles to find out um, which is the winner. And also, um, I mean, lots of messages saying uh, that uh, there has been some cheating. So, I mean, we need to proceed very cautiously. So, we have a winner, but uh, we still need uh, to figure out uh, whether they, there has been some violation of uh, the rules. Uh, using bots uh, for increasing the votes, but uh, I mean our um, our um, technic uh, technicians uh, look closely, and uh, it seems that we have a clear winner right now. So I'm happy to announce that the winner for the People Choice Award for Startup Lab 2020 is uh, the team Buy in Loco. Congratulations, guys. And uh, you all, uh, all of the members of the team uh, win a grant, uh, a travel and study grant for 100,000, uh, 100 euros, maybe 100,000. Okay, and that's it for the People Choice Award. And um, so let's move on again. And now, I mean, we are going to the heated part. So uh, the third place award, uh, for Startup Lab uh, 2020. And uh, I have uh, now Susanna Zuccherini, which will introduce uh, and uh, yes. announce the winner. <laughs> yes, I have the pleasure to announce the third place award. And uh, everyone, uh, all of us loves music. <laughs> and then uh, the third uh, place award is to Fletcher, because there is a very target solution uh, for drummers and of, uh, because of feasibility on the market and also for the passion, but the passion is for all of the, the teams. <laughs> okay, then... thanks Susanna and uh, congrats Fletcher and congrats also for the prize and for your study, study grant. And um, so that was the set third place and now we move on on the second place. So, uh, Christian, again, will be announced the winner. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Alessandro. And the second place award goes to a team that demonstrate that still is possible to produce and think about hardware connected with software to train and get better and better and give us the best piano music. So, the second place goes to Gradus because they've been extremely uh, clear on what they want to do. They are musical, they are vertical, they are hardware, and they are like training. So please forgive me for the non-Italian speaker, but we accepted to give them the award, the Buon Gradus. So you are very good and take care for your second place. Thank you. Thank you, Christian, and congrats uh, to Gradus team uh, for winning the second place award. Uh, very well deserved, and your study grant as well. Okay, so thanks. Uh, I want to thank the jury for the hard work that they put. Uh, I mean, it, it seems that uh, they made a lot of work. Uh, I mean, they had the Q and A session. They had all day long to review also the other teams' videos. They really, really work a lot. So thanks, Susanna, and thanks, uh, uh, Christian, and also thanks to your colleagues uh, in, in the jury. And, and your, your uh, work and your mentor make our uh, uh, work harder and harder because it's very, very okay. difficult to choose. <laughs> yeah, we had trouble as well to finding <laughs> out which was going to the final and which not. So um, we need to move on, but before presenting the... Um, First place, so the winner for this year. Uh, I think uh, we need to extend uh, the. Oh no, thanks. Oh yes, the Heat Award now. Before uh, that, uh, so Heat Award. What is the Heat Award? 
So the HIT award, so HIT is Ab Innovazione Trentino and Ab Innovazione Trentino is our, I mean, I mean um, partner from Contamination Lab. And um, Ab Innovazione Trentino have a call, uh, which is open. Uh, and so everyone, every team from Startup Lab, BD Lab can apply, but they selected two teams that uh, can, uh, can get directly into this uh, award. Um, without uh, um, without applying for the school, so they uh, win direct access for a six month of support service of Hub Innovation Trentino. What does it mean to support uh, services? Means hospitality, uh, obviously according also to sanitary conditions and what happened with the coronavirus. But uh, you will have uh, a working space into their um, workspace in uh, Povo coaching, networking to events and to selected business opportunities and investor meetings. So this is the supporting service of Ab Innovazione Trentino, which is what our partner in a contamination lab and has supported strongly also Startup Lab and BD Lab with coaches and with mentors like um, uh, Matteo Cevese, Elena Petrucciano, Andrea Guarise, um, Arianna, that you had uh, as mentoring you've seen during this, uh, these weeks. Okay, so and now I'm happy to announce the winners. So th these are two teams and the teams are Goldberry, congratulations, and Caltex, uh, congratulations to both teams. And uh, this is it, but before uh, presenting the final awards, I need to extend the um, congratulations and uh, the thanks. Uh, so before the first place award, I would like, uh, do we have the slides? Okay, switch slides, please, because we have the thank you reels to show, um, because Startup Lab uh, couldn't be um, the experience that it is uh, if we didn't have all that people working and volunteering and uh, working with us. So thanks a lot uh, to the team, first of all. So um, obviously I'm happy to work uh, with uh, Vittorino and uh, Gloria in this endeavor, but I'm also happy to have other supporting team members and valuable team members like Sofia. So thanks Sofia, you've been an angel and uh, working with us uh, uh, with this uh, haunting task uh, of keeping everything tidy and everyone organizing the breakout room session in Zoom. Uh, I mean, you're really, really, really thanks for your help. And also thanks for the, to the communication team, uh, Gianluca and Jacopo, that worked a lot uh, for also for this demo day, okay? And, uh, and then I need to thank uh, uh, all the mentors, the 13 mentors, so Daniele, Carlo, uh, Nadia, not Natalia, Arianna, Clelia, Giovanni, uh, several Lorenzos, several Daniele, so we can make it quick, uh, Zveta and Leonardo and Stefano, so thank a lot uh, for the time that you, uh, and the effort and the coaching. And uh, then we also have to also thank the junior mentor. I mentioned five of them, but they are actually six. So Jasmine, Luca, uh, Davide, Elisa, Gabriele, Alessandro, thanks a lot. And please come back again next uh, year. We are waiting for you. And I want also uh, to, to, I want to, uh, to uh, enter here, uh, Alessandro, because I think uh, these are uh, students that uh, enjoy Startup Lab. And then uh, after some uh, later experiences uh, are coming back to, to give back their experience to, to students uh, as they were a couple of years ago. So we expect that you, dear students, that uh, the one who loved the Startup Lab, please come call us back, uh, call us and uh, let's plan to become a junior mentor. And we hope that uh, in uh, five years from now, we can call you also as, uh, as senior mentors. So please, this is an engagement. Thank you. Sorry, Ale, I give you- Super, back. super, uh, Vittorino, yeah. thanks. And uh, then we had some guest lecturers. So Alfredo Maglione from Industrio, 
Nicola Doppio from Ab Innovazione Trentino, that I forgot to mention before. Paolo Lombardi, which uh, lectured on uh, Lean Startup. Uh, Teresa Macchia from uh, um, Conica Minolta. Eduardo Guerrieri and Massimo Zancanaro, uh, Eduardo Guerrieri from Jellyfy and Massimo Zancanaro from the University of Trento and FDK. So thanks for them lecturing. And uh, finally, our pitch coaches. So mentor were not, uh, it was not enough to have senior mentor, to have junior mentor, um, to have instructors and lecturer. We also wanted, uh, you know, someone external that came just in the last two weeks and review the, the pitches and um, make, um, gave a lot of feedback and force all the team to start working again, maybe from scratch, maybe from zero, pivoting, changing completely that presentation, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, I mean, these are a lot, but I really want to mention thanks to Alessandro Ligabò, uh, Miriam Stoliceva, Alessandro Di uh, Alberto Dieze, uh, Alessio Salzano, Andrea Guarise from Ab Innovazione Trentino, Gabriele Paglialonga from Industrio, Mauro Cavosi, Matteo Cevese from Ab Innovazione Trentino, Maria Teresa Stella, which is a former alumni, uh, for former participant to Startup Lab, uh, Davide Presutti, uh, Selene Colapietra, Nicola Mezzetti, Elisa Guardabasso, uh, as well, uh, it was part of Startup Lab some years ago. Elena Petrucciano from Ab Innovazione Trentino and um, Daniela Dubla. Okay, thank you a lot for the coaches. I think we are done with the um, thank you reels. And uh, so now we are back for the scheduled uh, uh, award. So this is the this is the end of uh, two, and uh, we enjoyed a lot this. Uh, no, Alessandro, no, no, no. I have to stop no. you. So uh, let's keep the suspense a little bit more <laughs> up. Uh, come on. <laughs> uh, too early to say who's the winner. Come on, I'm eager. I want uh, to No, hear. no, no. You, you know, so I put, you see, I am dressed completely. I am dressed by like a jury member uh, to be disguised. Now, I would like to say before announcing the winner, because of course a winner uh, have to be, but uh, I was telling also to some of the non-finalists that uh, the target for Startup Lab is that you learn a method and you put yourself into practice into one of your ideas. So this was the point. You succeeded super well, you succeeded not extremely well, but all of your idea were really good uh, we have to say and this is also something that the jury told us that out of 23 uh, teams there were probably the top three that was slightly better the the last uh, two three that was maybe a little bit uh, less uh, competitive but there was there was a big bell in the middle which level has been higher than previous year and so Thanks to you, thanks to the effort, our target is to make you autonomous to replicate this exercise with another team in another place of the world, with, of course, with different uh, uh, tutor coaches. And uh, Alessandro have some money and she's showing. <laughs> Come on. Okay, throw the money, there is a fake there. Okay, and uh, please replicate this it will be in your company it will be you will be employee or manager in someone else's company do it put into practice cps validate uh, uh, go into a, a business modeling and then uh, uh, put the money around and pitch it and be sure that uh, whenever you will be able to perform and convince your boss convince a jury then you will have something that will start and then this will, will generate. Either you will grow up in the career as manager or you become startup. This is totally up to you, but we would like that you uh, internalize the, the method and put into practice. And we are very happy. We, we hope that you realize that you did it because looking from our side, you did it. So we saw the improvement from the panic of the first day to the super panic of the pivot to the panic of the one, two, three uh, clinics and now coming to, to the glory. 
So you did it, you learn it, please put it into practice. Everything we did was just for you, not for us. So please do it. And now, and now, and now, Alessandro, if you really need to say something. Yes, uh, what I need to say, um, I'm sorry that we didn't have a physical demo because uh, I mean, you missed a lot of gadgets. So you missed uh, Vittorino's fake money that you can, uh, but you can, I mean, you, you will, I mean, this will arrive to you. I mean, sooner or later we will meet again and you miss a lot of gadgets like uh, t-shirts, but we'll keep the t-shirts for you, okay? Um, I mean, I know that you want stickers for your screen, for your computers, uh, even the bottle, official bottle of Contamination Lab and the official can of Contamination Lab, but there will be time also to meet and to exchange these kind of gadgets. And, uh, so I think without further ado, let's announce the winner for uh, the 2020 Startup Lab uh, competition. So please, uh, Susanna. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, the jury was uh, completely, uh, the jury completely agree about the winner. Um, and we think that uh, there is, a, a new equation, a new equation. When you merge love and technology, equal three. And then uh, this solution uh, went, uh, this uh, team went uh, through many steps of validation. And then the first uh, place award is to CalpDex. Congratulations, guys. Congratulations, the only one with a social innovation impact. Congrats, Super. Congrats. Super. So I would like to, everyone connected to the conference, if you can open the, your camera so we can uh, uh, see each other. And uh, I think this is the, I mean, this is the end uh, of uh, our journey, but uh, there's more to come. So Startup Lab uh, Demo Day finish years, but uh, I mean, uh, there's more to come. In real life, we will meet again and I mean, I'm sure that we will work again or meet together and share uh, the excitement of this night. So thanks to everyone. Vittorino, you want to close? Don't let us cry. Don't, don't make us cry, please. No, I am already crying, uh, you know. <laughs> it's, you know, uh, part Vittorino is particularly happy of the Zoom uh, demo, demo. No, demo. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. Whatever I, whenever I cannot uh, touch the participant, uh, okay. Uh, not uh, harass you, but let's say, whenever I cannot embrace participants, <laughs> whenever I cannot uh, see the sweat and the loud voice of uh, people getting angry and then get uh, smooth again, I, I feel a little bit of a pain because let's say, uh, entrepreneurship is, is passion and entrepreneurship is, uh, is, uh, is energy, is uh, wilderness and all this through Zoom is like channeling, I don't know, elephants uh, to, through, through uh, key door holes. So, okay, that's it. But um, I'm happy, I told already so to, to one team, so I, I replicate uh, what I told to them, that my greatest pleasure is that uh, I, it seems that I come here to teach, but uh, I am coming here to learn. So I step out of here with more energy than when uh, I started and uh, with uh, too many faces in mind that whenever I feel a uh, little bit, uh, uh, should I do it or not? I see all your faces and say, do it, do it, do it. Okay, let's do it. And so thank you for the energy. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I, I said it again and it's not a fake. It, is, uh, it has been a privilege. We have uh, so lucky. So Alessandro, Gloria, and, and myself, uh, the Jacopo, also, all the mentors. But uh, believe me, we three have all the fun, or the majority of the fun, because uh, we stay together with special people that, first of all, self-select themselves because they make an application. For those that have a compulsory course, come on. OK, you have to do it. Uh, so for the Italians. Uh, uh, 
for, for the other, you have to take it whatever is, is, is served. But um, for all the others, uh, so you are a self-selected elite that we have the privilege to work with. And uh, we have the fantastic, uh, really the joy of seeing you growing. And uh, come on, I have three kids, but probably now we have already exceed 1,200 uh, Startup Lab kids. And, and girls, sorry, sorry, I don't want to have gender diversity. Gloria is already looking and killing me with her eyes and uh, Okay, okay, thank you, because otherwise I start crying. And um, thank you for everything, thank you for the joy. Thank you for the jury for being with us. Uh, you did a great job because in, uh, in such a short time, you have to make an evaluation of so many people, so many videos. And uh, thank you, it's a great pleasure also for having you here. Thank you thank so much, you. thank you again. Uh, uh, I start to be emotional because it's like, uh, I don't know, is uh, uh, for the Italians is like a bienella al gatto. So I, I now start uh, seeing the small birds flying away. And so, okay, I hope to see you again in the sky every, every season passing by. When you pass by, you stop. Sorry, uh, this is not a... Uh, uh, maybe no is a must you stop uh, you come here and you start to be at least a junior junior mentor or you witness uh, your your experience after startup lab after trento university stop otherwise uh, go and uh, have a party now because what you will remember of this will be the party <laughs> the party after startup lab with uh, social distancing and um, in uh, good social happiness. It, it okay. misses happiness only the to... Trento Doc. It, it misses only the <laughs> drink <laughs> together, Trento Doc. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Trento Doc, Trento Good Wine Doc, uh, yes. Uh, where to wine, uh, it's a free advertising for where to wine also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks to everyone. Okay. And, uh, I Thank just you, want everybody. To, I just want you to remind that uh, starting from tomorrow, you can uh, start contacting Gloria and ask for our gadget. So you can ask for the t-shirt, you can ask for the bottle, you can ask for the stickers, yeah. but particularly the gadget for this summer. And this is the gadget for this summer. It's the screen, the sun blocking screen <laughs> for your car. You just, you want this. You want to park your car in the sun, you go to the seaside and the sea, and remember that contamination like protect your car okay yes and only for one euro more you can have also the, the sticker for two euro more the t-shirts and okay fate la fare forza ragazzi let's come and ask to okay see you soon bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. thank you so much